Not even that part. Like, it's basically just him laying in bed, just jerking it. I'm like, really? Did we have to get this image of this man? Again, so again, it's critical. Again, this plot the the, element. The, the, self, the self insert, man. That's why it create the trope <laughs> again, of reincarnation. Hey, I'm not watching this to watch myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's what I, that's what, <laughs> I knew it, dude. Oh, my God. That's what I wrote people are watching it for. <laughs> The Anime Isika Podcast, week two of the winter 2021 season. I'm your host, uh, on this show, we discuss the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stratton. Hello. Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. And finally, we have Justin. Hey, everyone. All right. Uh, so no anime news real quick. We're going straight into Jujutsu Kaisen. Just returned this week from, I guess, like their two-week break. So we'll get, you know... So first off, yeah, new OP, new ending. Sad that it's just, a new ending's not as good as the first one, but trash. Nobody misses that. <laughs> oh, you shut yeah. your face, Shred. <laughs> that being did said, you, I actually don't care. Crowd. Jujutsu Kaisen should have been brave, and they should have broken the like broken the mold and not changed ending. That's what, that's what Demon Slayer did too. So, <laughs> just saying that. So uh, besides that, um, oh, I guess this week, I mean, we were not. I guess we were expecting no one really care about. Uh, uh, Yuji pretty much coming back alive, and then oh yeah, Expected. just I guess you know setting up for the, the the tournament. I I mean I got baited too, just like the other characters. I thought we were going to Kyoto, but I guess we're in Tokyo, so <laughs> nothing much. Uh, I'll leave up. To, I'll leave the discussion up to you guys. I just want to give shout out to Toto. Was it Ku's favorite? Where he just Dude, straight up totally just like, my favorite character. Man has a priority straight. Dissing everyone for the lack of taste. <laughs> Dude, yeah, like move over, Gojo, but man, this guy is my favorite the show. Yeah. This guy knows what he wants and he will not like like uh beat around the bush for it, you know. So I, I appreciate him. And then did you see the uh did you do stroll at nope. the end? Yep. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say. Better, dude. <laughs> it was so good. It was so good. Um, yeah, that, that, that chick is really weird, but that's, uh, apparently that's his thing, though. Dude, she's idle. She's idle. She's, <laughs> she's, 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 she's doing a TV show. She's so. She has a big ass. That's all the criteria he had, okay? So that that's... Oh, I suppose, yeah. You know? <laughs> but, oh, man, that guy is so funny, dude. Oh, my God. Mm-hmm. No, I for one, I'm I'm excited to see the you know new cast of Kyoto characters that we got introduced this episode. So I think dude, there's a fucking too. robot in right, Kyoto dude. school. <laughs> yeah. I, I literally thought of um, God, what the character from like Tekken, the fighting game, was like a robot samurai in that, and I literally just thought of that I guy. Of when I saw card him. from <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh. What's that? Yeah, guy? the Joey has friend. The uh, the uh, time wizard. Not a time wizard. It's like some. Huh? The robot though? Oh, Jinzo? Jinzo, yeah. It oh, Jinzo. Jinzo. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I think Yoshitsu hits it better. Uh, like, hits the, the mark better, I think. No, okay. I don't really play Tekken, so I'm not familiar with the character, but. Same. I, I don't know. Yeah, All no. good. But I love the, love the robot and I fits, it, fits, fits the with the panda in the show. <laughs> yeah. Dude, and did you guys see the panda in the in the opening? He Dude, looks badass. Bad <laughs> bad yeah, I, I think that's his like cursed energy power. I don't remember getting the opening. Yeah. Oh, guys, well, if you rewatch it, you'll 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 know. Yeah, definitely go there. back. <laughs> guys, we talked about how like everybody misses the ending, but the I think the opening is way better this season than the previous season. I, I like the last season's opening. I like the season's opening too. So, I, like I, like I, I, I like them both. Yeah, I like them both. I do like this better though. They're both okay, but I would listen to this the more often. Animation is surprisingly yeah, definitely nice. not skimping on especially, the animation, especially for three D animation. Yep, mm-hmm. that too. Yeah, yeah, that was actually like well done. Uh, but this this episode was basically just kind of like everybody introducing, like realizing that that Yuji's still alive, and then just setting up for the the the, the not, not even the, tra- the tournament arc. Yep, God, just, I always got to have one of those. Just the plot for the remainder of the season, I suppose, right? Because now you have the uh, like the the bad guy group uh, kind of coming up with a new plan as to what they're going to do now. I mean, well. they mm-hmm. they mentioned that like yeah, there's, uh, there's of course always a traitor in the organization. I feel like mm. like one, one Amy's favorite plot. Mm. Yep, so yeah. that secret agent sneak <laughs> it's on the in. Easiest, it's the easiest way to get information. 
who do you who do you think it is? Because I know when Gojo was talking to the other kind of like teacher of the Kyoto school, he was telling her like, "Hey, I know there's a rat, but I don't know I who it like is." We don't we don't like we don't see many of the teachers in like either school, so it's hard to tell. That's true, right? Like, yeah. But do you think it could even be one of the students? Like, did, did they say specifically it was a teacher no, that was infiltrated? Or no, it's hard to say because we're just, right. We're limited on characters right now. Well, yeah. Gonna, uh, my my prediction would be the the third year last year that was like super strong or super powerful. I forgot what his name was, but they they did mention him. Yeah, I know what you're oh, talking about. Oh, yeah, the one that they yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the whole reason that it's being held there for this year's right. tournament. I'm gonna yeah. say it's I'm gonna say it's a sushi speaking guy because the guy never speaks. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I that's mean, my awful guess. So we'll I would, see. I wouldn't rule it out, but yeah, maybe. Yeah. Yep. I did enjoy the uh, small attention to detail with the one like main villain group where the guy who has the volcano head is like smoking the pipe and like the pipe's head is like a little brain oh, with the face I didn't on even it. I noticed that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah it's a pretty just cute tie-in. Yeah. <laughs> a little yeah. weird, yeah, definitely. But the, I don't know. That, like the, I don't know why. Like I assume that he's gonna get some sort of like power up later on. But that guy is just terrible. Well, I guess he's not terribly weak considering like every, he did. Go Dude, he was super Gojo. strong. It's just like he had to go yeah. against Gojo. <laughs> like, Gojo. Uh, yeah, right. I mean, like, no like, super weak. He's strong. Uh, yeah, but, I, yeah. I think also in the opening we get to see, or they allude to that, like the one other main bad guy who speaks like backwards or whatever that has one arm. Like he's fighting a couple of the students from the school. So I wonder oh, what his yeah. powers are gonna be. But like that, oh, like, right. that tree branch. But like weird, like alien tree branch guy. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, it looks uh, like he's a melee type character as well. Yeah, um, definitely. With only so, one arm. Mm -hmm. What so a beast. You see matchup against uh, Yuji and the others, I suppose. Yeah. Dude, there's really not much to talk about. <laughs> this is just kind yeah. of setting up the credit mark. Saying, I mean, it's first, first episode of the new arc, so it's expected. So Yeah, it's fine. Still uh, enjoying the show. Like, Oh, yeah. It's... I, I actually like tournament arcs, so because I, I, I actually man. like fighting. <laughs> so. I don't David, like, I think you'll, I, I think you'll be a little bit more. I don't, okay I don't like tournament fun. arcs, but I have a feeling there's there's gonna be a major plot happening in this tournament, so that's why I don't mind. I just don't like that's it when it's when, tournament arcs, right? that, well, I don't like it when it's just in an arena and people are fighting with like brackets. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but there's there's always somebody that like interrupts it though. Yeah, well, like, all not, not, always. not always. Not always. Hero Academy, they didn't have anybody interrupt it the first time. Yeah, oh, which is actually surprising because I think everybody basically said like somebody's going to get interrupted, yeah. but no, Bakugo went through it all. Yeah. Well, well, technically the, the the clay guy did interrupt the very end, which caused Todoroki to lose. I think because that was, well, that was before the ending, right? No, Todoroki won. Like yeah. you're talking against uh, Deku, no, Bakugo won at the very end. Yeah, Bakugo, Bakugo yeah. Todoroki. The play, right. yeah, play Todoroki guy. didn't use fire. Anyway, yeah. wrong wrong anime. <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> Anyway, um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't really have but any. When it's like when it's an open environment like Tokyo, like I'm pretty sure it's like there's gonna be like some sort of setup or ambush happening. So I'm yeah, so excited, makes it very easy, even for yeah. a tournament arc. Yeah, because yeah. isn't it basically like they're all just like wandering around, just trying to complete objectives? Right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's different than the normal kind of like. It's more know. like more like capture the flag slash. Like, it's kind of like uh, Hunter Hunter, how they do like the different kind of like exams and stuff. Yeah. And even like um, oh, okay. God of, uh, not God of High School. Uh, Tower of God. God. Tower of God, thank yeah. you. And plus like no. they have this other goal of trying to kill Yuji. So like, so mm -hmm. it's more than just a tournament arc. It's, it's, yeah, it's not really a tournament arc. It's more of like, like, it's like know. an exam. It's, it's, it's like exam. a tuning exam. Yeah, exam. Yeah. Yeah. Like Naruto <laughs> style. But they're in groups too. They're not like just solo. Yeah. Yeah, it was also true. awesome. So. You can see team synergy, which I can't see any team synergy happening with Yuji <laughs> in the other two. That doesn't seem like really any kind of synergy, synergy whatsoever. What? Dude, there's plenty of synergy with them. Because I think the majority of them is all melee, except for the guy that can only speak in uh, like uh, sushi. Oh, cops. shit. I forgot. They're a part of the team, too. Never mind. Right, I forgot right. all about them. So I was I just think thinking it was like team. Thick team dude, the team synergy works out really well. And then according to uh, Megumi's like uh, prediction, if it was just straight up melee, like no cursed energy powers at all, like uh, usually it would just totally take him out like easily, like hands down. So that just shows that there's they have really good team synergy and like shit's going to go down uh when they do a fight and then based on the preview that you're getting from the end of this episode it, it looks like they're just gonna like like launch pile up on UG. Yeah. yeah with the giant uh attack so yeah i'm excited i want to see it 
yeah also sure. uh, with, with the opening with uh, like how it kind of showcased like the the major fights that are, are going to happen later on um i don't know i kind of hope that it's just kind of a bait and it's not really what's going to happen in the future mm -hmm. uh because i was kind of possible. expecting i was kind of expecting something else right since like yuji and uh, nanami already fought against patches uh i was kind of hoping for them to maybe fight against the next guy that's stronger so like mm -hmm. uh like Patches' friend or whatever, uh, the other Jujutsu sorcerer. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was kind of hoping that would be the next uh, final boss that they would. Uh, I'm not. I'm not as worried. So I'm just, I'm just gonna go along for the ride. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. I suppose. I think so, we're good to go. Yeah, I think that's it for Jujutsu Kaisen. So really good start to the season, and we're all excited. And now uh, we're going to our next show with Promise Neverland, and we're joined by Sasha. Thanks for being with us. As okay. always, of course. Yeah. So this. Superashi. Yes. Maestro. Yes. So this episode, um, basically, I'm actually. So they revealed kind of like the big, the big reveal is that they're in this parallel world, in like the demon world, where, because, when they revealed the history where they had the agreement between the humans and the demons, I was actually surprised about this revelation because I thought it was either like the human world, but like way in the future, or I thought it was an alien world and. I guess you can call it an alien world because it's a demon world, but I don't know. Just that revelation really it surprised me for some reason. I don't know if you guys thought about that. Well, it's our world, right? But it's just split in half. Is it? Is that what it's it Earth. is? It's Earth. It was just split in half. There's the demon side and the human side. So it's like basically like the same thing, but just with demons and other creatures and yeah. Okay. Yeah, like I think I think those creatures probably ended up coming. I, I'm sure they wherever they came from because it seems to me like they came from somewhere else it seems like they brought some of their own ecosystem with them um and i think that's why that area but like i thought it pretty explicitly said that they're still on earth maybe i'm just not paying it's, too much attention it's, no, I'm it's just two like, worlds i looked it up it's two but they were talking about it's like the same planet like they're there with the humans it, it felt like it was like a, like some sort of like other dimension like this is like a demon yeah. dimension but I don't know. Something different. I, yeah, I, I'm with you, David. I, I was surprised because I thought it was going to go whole like the whole village vibe, that M. Night Shyamalan movie, where it's like, oh, we're back in the good old days. And then all of a sudden there's a wall and then you see a helicopter or an airplane fly, fly over and they're like, oh, we're in the real world. Yeah. So I thought as soon as they got past the wall, they're going to be like, hey, let's go to that 7 Eleven. Hell yeah. And then the aliens <laughs> were just going to be like humans in disguise. But Nope, that that threw me for a world. It's all a Truman show. Indeed. Oh, sort good of. reference. It's good refs are. <laughs> yeah, so it's a stretch. Definitely a stretch. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then that was like that was the main thing that really threw me off this episode. Otherwise, it's more just I guess the second part with uh, Emma having to learn how to hunt and like again that whole thing about like uh, we kept kill animals to live even though we don't want to be eaten like. That's that stuff's very common, so I wasn't like too shocked by it. But yeah, I, don't know. I think if anything from that particular part, the heaviness was with the I think it's the Gupna, the vampiric rose like the, that they oh, used yeah. to. I was, call it, I was gonna call it flower, but you make it sound much better. Than well, I think that's what they called it yeah. in the show, so yeah. I just wanted to make sure I was yeah. accurate. No, but, that part was important too. Um, yeah, since you tied back, you know, the, to Connie and you know visualizations of that happening to Norman and everything, and being like, damn. This has been going on like this the whole time, and now I'm kind of doing what needs to be done. But like you said, that's just the real world. Like it's either get got or you know. I just feel survive. like that, that theme's been done so many times, so it's like it just I don't like feel it. Anything when I hear it, like we've seen it a bunch of times. So I don't know. Yeah, I think this was a necessary episode, but not the most entertaining episode. And the only reason is because. It shows the development. It reveals key plot points. It's a lot of exposition by Jericho Legolas randomly serving them tea. I would have not taken that tea, by the way. Um, so what'd you call it, it Jericho it Legolas? Good. I have no idea what his name was. Oh, okay. I, I just, he, oh you he mean Sanju? Like yeah. So there you go, Sanju. Thank you. <laughs> That's close enough. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Man. So. You know, that guy walked around with, like, a keychain and a trident on his back. Whatever he's doing. Um, a lot of exposition by him explaining, and then they're getting the whole training. So it was, like, almost like a giant arc within one episode, which I was like, okay, this is the necessary sacrifice. It kind of reminded me of uh, the 
prior to last episode of Attack on Titan, where you got a lot of exposition about Willy and that whole background, you're like, okay, come on, man, let's get back to the main stuff, which is, I want to feel that tension. I want to feel them being hunted. I want to feel the aliens coming back or the demons. And, you know, like you just mentioned, they got the whole Gupna thing going on, um, which, fun fact, by the way, guys, in Britain, vampires would say, hello, Gupna, before they would God put flowers it, into their victim's hearts. God damn it, I got baited. <laughs> Uh, <sighs> yep. Um, so I think it was a good episode. Uh, my 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 tagline for this episode is Katniss Amadine, aka basically she's becoming Katniss Everdeen in the Hunger I'm face game. palming so hard right now. I just want you to. Know yeah, that. seriously. <laughs> I know I'm not cammed up, but oh man, bro. Oh, God. So oh. I could I could hear it through the mic. Only you know what I look like, bro. So you can imagine it. I'll leave a mystery yes. for everyone else until no. I no. actually get Cam. Um, he looks exactly like he's Soko for anybody who's wondering. You're not just a clown, <laughs> your entire circus. Sure. Yep. But, um, I, I mean, I always enjoy lore episodes because I always love lore, learning about the lore. So I'm glad they revealed like more about, the, I guess, the secret. So I'm, I don't know about their plan about trying to rescue all the other farms because like... It was a struggle getting out in the first place. I don't know if you really yeah, want to be that ambitious. Super wishful thinking, right? Like, I think you should just like screw it, screw them. Just get yourself out to the human world. Like you got enough problems yeah. with your well, own. That's family. a very Emma yeah. way. that's a very Emma way of thinking. She's always very much had that personality. So I, I wasn't surprised to hear her say it. Yeah, but Emma, she's not really thinking about it because you know why. They said the farm that they escaped was one of the top farms. Mm -hmm. And I take that as in terms of intelligence level, right? You get to that next farm next door <laughs> that's filled with just a bunch of woo, yeah, woo, woo. And you're like, okay, we need <laughs> Jimmy, we need you to stay quiet. Otherwise, the demon's going to eat this. Okay, I'll stay quiet. I'll stay. Woo, oh, yeah. God. <laughs> be... Just slaughter their whole family. Oh, my God. I'd be so, so... pissed if like, so those, those kind of people drag them down like that. Oh, my God. <laughs> I guarantee you it's coming up. Oh, God, please don't. By the way, uh, let's just place predictions here. Jericho Legolas, does he live or die? I think this guy gets sacrificed within the next five episodes. <laughs> I, th I, think we're done with, I think we're done with the two. I think they just got to leave them in the forest, and then the kids are just going to be on their own. I no, I've, I actually feel like those two demons will stay a lot, like with them for a long time. Oh, really? Just because they're, like, they're in the OP. Like, if you look fairly close enough, like, you okay. see them in, like, three frames in the OP, so I feel like they'll be with them for a while. Okay. I had this feeling that, like, when he was teaching Emma to hunt, like, that's because she couldn't rely on him anymore. And that's why she had to be self-sufficient. So I had this feeling, like, like they were going to stay in, in the... You, no, they're not going to stay in the forest. They're going to go their separate ways after they leave them. So... Mm -hmm. I feel like I feel like uh, during one of these little outings, I feel like the the male one is going to die and somehow protecting them, and then the female is going to go with them. I don't know why. That's just what I feel. That's that's like another way these things usually work out too. So I wouldn't be surprised either. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm you know interested what? too where they touched upon just like their religious beliefs of why you know they don't eat humans. Like that was a big focus for Emma and Ray of like you know if you don't eat humans, how do you survive? Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's just something important but now we kind of have like we they're know there's just... a different faction of monsters that I mean, don't it's it's like how, it's like how that. people don't eat cows we think they're sacred i think it's like that kind of right feeling. yeah i These also just feel, vegans i also feel like it definitely portrays demons in general as like the bad guys because like i said that like the humans yeah. and the demons made a pact however long ago to split wherever they are and but but like if these demons can live perfectly fine without eating people they're definitely yeah. super evil so i mean we already kind of knew that, but I don't know about that because because they made because no, they said no. that um like humans were also hunting demons back in the earlier times too. So oh, did they? I missed that part. They, if that, yeah, if they, they were hunting yeah. demons too. So like it was just oh, yeah. it was a war between the two of them. That's why there was a truce because they were at okay. war. Yep. Oh, humans hunting demons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yep. it was it was going well, they were hunting them because they were eating them, and if they don't have to eat them, yeah, that seems pretty terrible. Sure, but it's like it's just like oh back and forth conflict. So I didn't think it was. I didn't think it was for that portraying the demons as bad. I think it's just just two two factions at war, and they just had a truce, and this is the outcome. So true that. Mm -hmm. I mean, they did mention how like was it human brains are the juiciest meat available. It's just mm -hmm. so good. I mean, could you guys imagine giving up chicken? I can't imagine that. Get out of I... here. So I get them. 
Or, or sorry, soybeans. For anybody who does eat chicken. Think about the viewers, man, all right? I'm, I'm sorry, soybeans. And How dare eaters. you impose your own personal eating? <laughs> that's right. Take that. I will find you as I ride my weird horse. That's not a horse. <laughs> Show <Finally. man>. <laughs> demon horse. <laughs> Those creatures look his demon disgusting. horse. Yeah. Dude, <laughs> that demon horse looks like a broom with just a bunch of hay hanging off of it. <laughs> I would not trust riding that thing. And then, is anybody just absolutely disgusted by uh, Robe Lady's feet? I forgot her name. Mujica? Uh, Mujica. Mu That's what her yeah. feet look like. <laughs> look like some Mujica going on. Yo, man, I'm sorry in this world they don't have like toenail clippers or something that they're just, you know, <laughs> doing their thing with keeping up appearances. Like. Dude, you, you know when she was trying to climb up, and then I think it was Emma gave her a hand. I would have been like, "Yo, I'll give you a hand, but you gotta clip them." <laughs> wow. wow, man! All right, well, we know you're not making it in this world. You're leaving you guys back at the farm. You, oh, dude, I'm you're, back you're, at the farm. Like, you're, you're beep, beep, Phil, beep, boop, I can't go. <laughs> you gonna be Phil? I'm like, Is Isabella, help me out. Nah, man, I won't even give him Phil. <laughs> That's too much. Damn. So, yeah, so. Basically, just big, uh, big reveal, and then just setting up for. I don't know how long they're it's gonna take for them to get out of the forest. I, I, I don't know like how what direction the show's gonna go. Like if they're really got, if the next thing they do is just try to find other farms, and try to help them escape. I'm assuming that like the pursuers are gonna be back soon, and they're getting deep shit. So mm -hmm. we'll see how like that all these events unfold. I think if I'm not mistaken, at the end, didn't they have the one scene or they like pan back to like what Ray carved into the tree? Yeah, they did. But they didn't. They didn't. Uh, they don't know what the coordinates are. I don't think they were just like, oh, what are what is this? What are these numbers? Actually, no. But I did no. Actually, they did say they keep putting uh, importance on the the William Minerva guy. So I guess that's mm -hmm. the next goal is go to him and see what he says. So oh guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess it's like Dude. it's get out of the force and go to him. But I'm Do just saying, like, the people pursuing them, they picked up on whatever Ray carved on the tree. Yeah. But it means nothing to them. Do we know what Ray carved? Like, what is that? It says, uh, I, didn't, I didn't read it, but... Like, um, I think it was something about meeting him somewhere. Yeah. Because it was at the time where he distracted the demon. Yeah, and he didn't and know then, that Emma passed out, so he was thinking yeah. that so for Emma. he'll find it. Yeah, it was just, he knew Emma was smart enough to know. What I wasn't meant. sure. I wasn't sure if it was supposed to be like a thing for Norman, like if it was supposed to be like a something mm -hmm. that will get brought up in the future when Norman probably shows up again. I don't know. Yeah, I thought it was just for Emma, but I wasn't looking too yeah. much into it. Yeah, hard I think to they say. literally flashed it was... for like a second. Ray needs to work on his life or death handwriting. Let's be honest. I was I was struggling to read that. I was like, uh, pursuers G five. I don't know handwriting. Like you, I don't blame the guy for, for being panic in that situation. He's literally yeah, exactly running from his life from two like like <laughs> no excuses. Massive and, horse beast. It's really just a show. Only gives a second. If, if you pause it, you probably could read it. Let's just we only have a second to read it. Yeah. It's not a big yeah thing. yeah it, it it just it pretty much just said go coordinates pursuer. Mm -hmm. Oh okay okay, I guarantee you guys this. Th there's that key moment when Jericho Legolas was like, "Hey guys, uh, I I go underground because that's where the tree roots are, and I'm the only one who knows the way, dude." Anytime they say I'm the only one, they're not the only ones. Just wait. Those horses or dogs or whatever they were with the weird looking eyes. They're going down there. They're going to be like, mm, I smell something here. It's a room filled with children. Bam. They're dead. Actually, real quick, going back to like the oh. pursuer thing, I think yep. Ray purposely led the demons to a wrong coordinate. Because mm, looking like back, it. like the the coordinates that he wrote down are completely different from like the projector that they have, their coordinates. So I don't remember any of the coordinates at all, it, so I, I did not pick this up. So. It's like B fifty two. So like the coordinates on the tree say like like what one oh six thirty two or something, and then the projector is like A O two O eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that'd be it's nice. like A six dash thirty two in the first yeah. screenshot. Something like that. Ray always oh. playing them yeah. mind games. Big brain moment. Yep. Master grandmaster chess player. Only right Isabella's son could do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> no just, one else. That just feels bad when you say it like that. That's <laughs> right. really fucked up. Like you have to leave his mom like that. Yep. 
Especially when they're all they Dude, together. You gotta do what you gotta do. But I will say, I agree with Taylor's point last week where I just love the world of them being on the farm and having to, you know, deal with the tension of that every single episode. So now it's like going over a stranger's house and before you can crack jokes or fart in their couch, you're wondering <laughs> what's actually appropriate. So <laughs> it's the same thing here where I'm, I'm like warming into the characters, but that girl's toenails, they gotta go. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> Uh, but I'm, I'm very curious about. I, I think episode three is definitely going to hit us hard. So something's going to happen. Yeah, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. Hopefully, we'll see how. Like I think episode three will kind of turn like the the tone and like how the rest of the season will go. So looking forward to it. I think. Yeah, I think that'll wrap it up for this week's episode. So we'll see what happens for episode yep, three. Looking promising. Uh, yep. Looking promising for Promise Neverland. Oh yeah. Let's yes. hope they're not going to MJ's Neverland. God damn oh, it. oh! I didn't want too to get soon, into, bro. Didn't want to get into that, but you had to say it, Justin. <laughs> ah, sorry. All right, Sasha made me do it. All right, so that's gonna be it for Promise Neverland. I'm a smooth driven. And then uh, we're moving next to Higurashi. And I just want to say how, um, like Taylor, you know how like last week you were saying how like that that episode bothered you, or the one that so far bothered you. Well, that was this week's episode for me. This, like, I felt, like, really, like, uncomfortable watching this week's episode. Really? It was, like, the first time I was like, man, I don't feel so good watching this. <laughs> like, I feel so, the, the like... Event? The events? The imagery? Or what was bothering just you? Just, like... The just, gore? Not the... I mean, not just... No? Maybe the gore? I don't know. Just, like, just... just I guess Are you the, reaching the, out for Iron Man? <laughs> no. Just feeling that uh, sympathy for Rika. Just, like seeing her go through all this and then just like like seeing the five loops and then like that last loop where it was just like the first day of like her the retry and she already gets fucked over i'm like man mm -hmm. like i don't feel good <laughs> i mean i don't think it was, i think it was supposed to make you feel not good yeah it i don't like so far like Higurashi hasn't it hasn't bothered me as much as I thought it would compared to how like everyone says like the old series was like super shocking with a shock value, mm -hmm. but I really felt it this week with like that shock value mm -hmm. like it really got to me this week. Yeah, it actually did get, kind of get to me too. This is much more along the vein of what I remember. Everything up until this point, like nothing, everything felt very weird and calm, and I was like, why is the show even happening? This is pretty mild. Yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, this is more like what I'm familiar with. So, like, but yeah, like, it was shocking. Like the first, the, the the first loop, whatever. When like when she asked that guy for help, and then just Millie cuts to her getting murdered. I'm like, what the hell? It just all oh, that debate. That oh, it was threw stupid. me off so much. Like, but but again, like the show, it, it does the tonal shifts really good. Like like it caught me off guard, but it was really effective. So. That was one thing that I meant to look up to because Ku had mentioned earlier last week, he was like, I'm going to have some questions for the podcast. So then I watched the episode and I realized that that guy was in the original and he, from what I remember, which is almost nothing, he was a very, it was like a part of a very minor arc, like near the beginning of the show. And then he goes away. Um, and so this was just tying that back in. And I told Ku that I think that they brought him in to show that she's trying to get creative with how she tries to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Um, but to just show ultimately that I don't know, she's fucked, I guess. Yeah, I kind of thought that uh I mean I didn't I didn't watch the originals, but I thought that mm -hmm. maybe uh he was part of her loop where she actually escaped from the city mm -hmm. uh before she woke up and came back to uh the village. Um but yeah, with with the the small flashback or introduction of the character, uh I kind of assumed he was just from the original series mm -hmm. and then kind of like what david mentioned when it looks like she was trying to get creative and she did ask him for help and they just did that total debate where he was ended up killing her i thought that maybe that was a flashback in and of itself and i did not yeah. expect them to <laughs> the loops like that yeah i thought it was a flashback too yeah. I, I was a little confused in that point so. yeah oh um yeah i i didn't expect them to go through that many iterations in one episode um but I'm kind of glad they did, to be honest. I feel like, because I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see what they're going to do now instead of that. Because I figured that if they went through each one and had like a couple episodes per arc, it was going to basically just out. be, yeah, like what we've been doing. So I'm actually happy that they did it this way. But don't you feel like it's too early for that? Don't they still have about no? Or there is still? there is so much lore 
with this show that they haven't even like touched on. So no, I think that we, there's plenty of material that can fill the, f the following episodes, depending on where they want to go with it. I mean, as long as I get the pacing good, like I'm fine with it. Mm -hmm. Like so far, like the, because our, like it's been intense, but like, I think we're at the point like where we finally need to get like more of the lore. Mm-hmm. I'm I agree. Actually kinda, I'm actually kind of disappointed in how they played it out this episode. Really? I feel like they wasted a lot of potential. Like, yeah, they might have dragged it out if they had like four or five more like arcs to work with mm -hmm. or, or to go through. But to have all four of them go through in one episode, I feel like that was rushed too much. Yeah, but what do you want from those if they were carried out? I mean, it really is just going to it's you're still going to get exactly the same thing that we got from this episode. It would just take longer. They would have all still ended that way, and you still wouldn't have learned anything. Well, usually with each arc, they always kind of give you tidbits as to like the background on the lore. Yeah. But with this episode, they didn't really give you anything other than well, the fact that she's trying something different, and it's mm -hmm. not going to work out. Well, I think the whole point of the episode was to give you the point of view from Rika. It's like this is what she ha she has to constantly go through for mm -hmm. each loop. So like, it's trying to get, make the audience like feel hopeless. Feel, yeah. Like how she's feeling, how like this is why like like I don't know, just her hopelessness and how like just how but especially when um when Hanyu went away, like that's her only like the only thing keeping her sane. Mm -hmm. And so and now that and that's why this episode really bothered me because like because this is only just five of the loops, whereas like she's been doing this for a hundred years. So like Yeah, yeah but to to touch base on that, that was already expressed in the last episode with how depressing or how like demoralized she is. From I all felt this, like this right? episode was much more effective, like showing from her like <laughs> constantly going through the loops because that's what she, she that's what she does. Whereas last episode, yeah. I think I think it was just a small glimpse of what what it is. Yeah, because it was more of like a let, let me show you, not tell you kind of thing. Yeah. like the last the one before just told you oh. I've been doing this for a long time and oh, I'm miserable. And you're, you could just take that at face value, I guess. But this one really put you there yeah, um, and made you feel miserable. Mm, I so, I mean, I, I can see your point of view. I don't disagree with it. I think everybody's going to react to it differently. And as for like, if I think they made the right choice or not, I mean, I think time will tell. I think that this gives them a good opportunity to be able to go through some heavy lore that they need to go through because there's a lot. I still frequently have to reference Wikipedia articles because I get my timelines okay. mixed up or... Like, who does what? Or it, like, there's a lot. So I feel like I would have been disappointed knowing that there's so much that, that would never get talked about if we did spend all that time going through each of those five loops. Right. So, like, but I don't know if they will. That's why I'm hoping like the pacing will be good to finally just. I don't want, like a huge lore dump. Like, so I'm hoping like if there is that many, like, well, the the ring episodes will be good to put use, and we'll get the information we need. Well, I mean, I suppose, uh, and then, like you guys mentioned, I guess time will tell. Uh, I, I think the next, uh, how they finish out this arc is going to depend or depict on like how I feel about it, I guess. Because mm -hmm. uh, I guess uh, with Jujutsu Kaisen episode four, I kind of did the same thing as well. I kind of let that one episode kind of ruin the rest of the series for me. So, so maybe I'll just leave this alone and see how it plays out. Side note though, Keiichi being like evil and killing people made me very sad like i don't know that, like that was the loop that made me feel depressed like not not the yeah. fact that she got betrayed by the guy that was supposed to help her or mm -hmm. like her, her trying something different like the fact that keiichi was the guy mm -hmm. that uh caught the the virus or whatever or mm -hmm. the curse and then like for some reason right because you 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 know that keiichi is like the main character or whatever mm -hmm. or he was the guy that was supposedly going to break fate i thought that at the last second he was going to turn around and like regain his senses and nope, nope Rita died. We could die. Like, <laughs> no. I mean, for me, it's just the fact that like his loop, his like loop was when it was like the first day of coming back. That's what hit me more. It's like she couldn't even take get a break. It was like the mm -hmm. first day, and he already already goes crazy. Oh right, right. Yeah. So yeah. that's what hit me more. And that, that was, was pretty depressing, especially because he was so gung ho about like wanting to help her. He wanted to do anything he could to help her. Yeah. It was just like very demoralizing to see which the flip side of which, that. So, I, so now I, I looking back, I can kind of appreciate Satoko's arc more because like it gave Rika hope that like things were finally mm -hmm. going well and that like oh like, hell no <laughs> like well it felt like she was finally getting progress for once. But I guess that might be like the biggest progress that they ever gotten until the very last second. So. 
Well, I guess, I guess my problem with that is the fact that you gave someone hope and just to take it away, like that's a lot worse to me than like beating someone down and then like let them have the happy ending, you know? Like mm -hmm. it's kind of like Satoko's arc was like the, the, the cliche Japanese horror movie. <laughs> like everything was going to work out well. You solved the mystery and you're going to get this happy ending. And then nope, at the very end, it looks like uh, something happened, whether it be bad luck or you overlook something that made it turn into a bad ending. And that's basically Satoko's arc. And I think that's just horrible as a person who watched the uh, like the, the arc and had like their hopes up and whatnot. At least with mm -hmm. this, you're already beaten down to the point where you have nowhere to go but up, right? So I'm kind of <laughs> hoping that's what the, the, the message is with this, with we'll this arc, right? Like it's darkest before dawn. <laughs> that, that's, that's, that's the best I hope I'm getting here. Right. So we'll I'm, really, see. I'm really yeah. curious, like, what is Rika? Like, it seems like everyone for some reason wants to kill Rika when they like get like curse like so it's obviously something to do with like their neck ink itchy but, like I wonder if like if Rika has some sort of curse in her bloodline that's giving er that's that's causing it. Seems like she's like the center of everything, so I don't know. I'm uh, curious to see what that lore is about. It kinda of leads me to believe that it really won't end until she commits suicide because she is the one that's kind of passing out the curse to others. It it's, it looks like yeah. from, from the um, but I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm, I'm, I guess this show is going to try to solve that. Because that would be the easy way out. I'm thinking the show is going to try to solve the problem of getting whatever curse that Rika has. Well, they have eight episodes or whatever to work with. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, yeah. I guess. But Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's all I have to say. I feel real shitty after watching this episode. So. I watched this episode while eating again. <laughs> I told you not to. What? What are you doing? It was okay. I got through it. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't eat when I was watching that. Cause like I said, Keiichi's loop. Oh my god, that just that was really bad. That was rough. That was so oh, I, rough. I watched it like <laughs> at night, so I felt really bad going to bed. <laughs> Starts crying in bed. Really? No. <laughs> Why did you do that? Because she was about to survive too, but then she let her guard down to try yeah. to get Keiichi to come back to the senses. And oh my god, dude, that there's so many things wrong with that loop. I just, I just can't like. <laughs> So depressing. His voice actor is really good at acting crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that, that's all I had. So Yeah, so Ditto. looking uh, forward. So I'm glad that the show's keeping quality from last season. Still really enjoying. Like, even with the stacks, uh, she's like, this still probably one of my favorite shows of the season so far. Mm. So so looking forward to next week's episode. That, that'll be it for Higurashi. Um, we'll, move back, we'll move on to one of the new shows that aired uh this week, uh, we got Dr. Stone season two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just realized I don't have the thing for, okay, whatever. So I don't have, <laughs> I don't have the, the thing at the bottom, but we're talking about Dr. Stone right now. Um, so. So, uh, it looks like, uh, they're about to start their war yep. and it's they're They're off to bring off the new cell phone to, uh, the others. So, uh, hopefully Taiju and the others are still okay. Cause I don't know what the time skip is and it, still winter so it can't be that far off from when they ended the last uh, oh I, last I think it was pretty much like right after uh, was it right after season, I, think. I think it's got to be really close because they were basically like you know like right like they were just like setting things up and this okay. seems weird they're basically just like they, i mean they, they just started it in a sense like just they just started the war by uh throwing like those explosive balloon things right right or starting them not throwing them but but then they had to make another cell phone and they had to make uh freeze-dried ramen so I assume that'll take some time. Oh yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm, but it'll be winter because I think it's just planned to attack in the winter. Yeah. Oh right, yeah, right. It's, no, no, it's basically sure. been the winter. Yeah. 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 Their their time skipping in this is very nice. We 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 don't have to. We basically get the idea of how to build it, how to make it, like what they're mm -hmm. doing, and they move on. It's Man, very nice, dude. Like when when Sen Senku said like we're gonna, our next like big like big, big brain item we're gonna make space food. I'm like what. But then when he explained, it, I was like, okay, actually, no, that actually makes sense. If you look at the history of like military strategy and stuff, yeah. So, mm -hmm. dude, Senku's coming up uh, like with this basically just like uh, through that way instead of you know like, the normal shonen way. Yeah. So it just makes it, it's, <laughs> big, it's it's big it's brain so nice. moment. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I also like how they kind of just like picked right up into it, and it's like we didn't even have to wait for like a build up. And they just started mm -hmm. like they basically just started the Stone Wars right at the end of the episode. It felt like it just mm -hmm. like it's picked up straight from like last season, so that was really nice. Even and even with like, that small intro, that what two minute intro recap, whatever, like it just felt like we're right, yeah. right back into it. So that I I really like this first episode of the season. It just sets everything up, and then and then and at the end of the episode too, they're going they're 
like going straight away to to attack. So it would makes it look forward make us look forward to next week's episode as well. Yeah. Yeah, right. it's pretty nice how they gave us a main objective for the season, right? We got to like out to Tsukasa somehow. And then how are you going to do that? Either by creating this false idol or whatever, or by playing God in a sense. Because I feel like they're trying to bring religion into it uh, to kind of like win the people back in a sense. I don't really know about so. religion because like really the plan was just there got a lot of them saying that um, that the outside world is okay. Like, and just, just. Bo- so it's like it's more like propaganda than religion. Like they're not. Yeah. I, well, there there was a quote in there uh, that made me believe they're trying to maybe throw religion to it, uh, saying how uh, there'll be a special place in hell for them. I think that's just like a saying. I don't think they even meant in their religious sense. I think it was more just like a conversation piece. Yeah. I don't think they're gonna really follow it. I, don't I, meant, still, like, I don't think it meant the literal like hell that people think of. Like. Yeah. I still no, like Senku's response. Yeah. Uh, it's like Senku's response to the whole thing. That was like my favorite line. <laughs> Where you basically just said like God's been absent in the world of science ten, for like ten billion years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, that's what I'm saying. You know, like yeah. how you how do you get people together? Like unite under one purpose. Either give them like a reason to, uh, with either like of war or with religion. You know, I think religion is pretty well, powerful tool. Yeah. I don't think no, I don't think it's religion. I think it's like he's saying that the only reason people follow Sakasa is because they have no other form of security. Whereas like that too, because they don't think anything else exists. Because besides what yeah. they what they know. So if they yeah. think that like. If they think there's some other force that's gonna help them, then that'll give them less reason to fall. Like they're not there because they like Sukasa. They're only there because like he's the only other choice they have. So uh, for survival. And I don't know, like. But you make a good point too, Kua. Um, that uh, I could see it possibly going something like that. But as of right now, I just feel like it was just kind of like a conversation piece. I don't think they're gonna. I, follow I don't think that. it's religious all right, at all. Right. Yeah. So. Yeah, I don't think so. But it could definitely fit because this is about science. <laughs> So we'll see. I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I, I actually just really want this to have, like uh, this. This is the like. I wish that this show would just be kind of like a long running thing. Because mm. I, I mean, it's, it's, really a, it's like in show and show. jump. I don't know how many chapters it has, but it's in show and jump, know, so man. it's been running but for the a animation, while. Yeah, I know, but it's not like one of those continuous ones. <laughs> oh. We need like. A, well, I don't. I don't want to be every week. Like you could week. always read the manga. Yeah, no, 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 not yet. Uh, I don't want to be every. I like. I like <laughs> I've liked this like this trend of having show and jump shows be like split by seasons. We don't. This we, would we, actually. Oh, sorry, guys, I don't know. I'll go ahead, turn. No, I was gonna say like of the shows like I, where I, where I always say like if I read the manga, it's gonna ruin those pieces and stuff like that. Like since this isn't like a generic show, and like by like or like by that I mean like the normal fights we see, it's just like the science, like science and base all, all that like building whatnot. Mm-hmm. That would actually be I think perfectly fine if I just read it in the manga because there's no like really intense action scenes I have to worry about. Oh, so um, like the metal wits rather than yeah, action yeah, action. and I think that's perfectly fine for me. Like I, you know, where it's like I, I would, I would see myself getting just as hype in the manga as I do in the anime. Hmm. But I know. E- even if it's uh, it, it's honestly whichever. But I'm, re- but I mean, this is this has been an awesome show, yeah. Justin. You should definitely pick it up. <laughs> you got it planned on the docket, so I'll catch nice. up soon. Nice, yeah, nice. <laughs> I, I, I know, I'm really excited for the just this, this episode just made me excited. Like I want to see like. The plan and like it, it sounds like there's there's this huge strategy, like being planned out, and that it's, it's like, and that we're just gonna see it unfold in the coming weeks. So it just makes me really excited. The one mm. sad thing is though, it's only eleven episodes. Oh, is it? It's a, what really? Is it not? Is it not even split up for two seasons or? Not, uh, not what I'm seeing yet. Okay. So far, it just says basically eleven episodes. That's weird. And I saw that. I'm like, oh god, no. That's that weird. Is it deserves way more than that. What the hell? We'll see. Yeah. So I, maybe it's it'll be a continuation after this. Maybe there's like delays for COVID. I don't know, but like, but oh yeah, probably. Should. I think, but it's 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 in Shonen Jump, and it was really popular before the anime aired. And at, I'm assuming after the anime, like it got really popular. Yeah. It just seems like a bunch of like Shonen Jump shows are just getting really popular. Like because, like you know, talk, before Doctor Stone, we had like I mean, Jujutsu Kaisen like said like their manga sales jumped up like. Like five oh, times awesome. because of the anime, yeah. yeah. Damn it, anime news. We forgot about it. And then like, um, and, and, well, and then you know, Demon Slayer and like Promise Neverland are ended. So, yeah, yeah, I think that's a big part of it. Like the reason why we're seeing other Shonen Jump showing up because the other giant shows are ending. So well, I think it's, it's like you just gotta find the next yeah. the next one up. You know, so, that's what well, I think. So I I think we'll be fine for anime. I just we just gotta be patient for yeah for Doctor Stone. Yeah, I'm uh, old man. Patience is, patience is big. <laughs> uh, as long as they don't do mamas anymore, I, I guess I'm okay with that. 
sucked. Uh, I know, dude. Like, like <laughs> we've lost so much faith faith with the uh, manwas now being taken over by like the like, companies mm-hmm. for for animation studios. Oh, I feel so bad. Yeah, because I know I know there's there's good ones. They're just not um, translating very well with anime. I think it's just because they're not given enough time and they just mm. speed it up way too fast. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Anyway, this is going to be one of my top shows. I'm going to be probably extremely biased and just assume it's this is going to be one of my favorite shows of the season. Uh, I always, I mean, I always love Battle of Wits and I love having a science specific, science folks show in anime. Okay. So, I'm, I mean, I guess they didn't really do, they didn't really show much of the science with like the freeze drying, but I think, we got I, mean, the idea. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess like I the concept was really cool. The concept yeah. was cool. Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess like, I guess even they don't do much science this season. I like the whole setup of like the strategy is so exciting for me. So yeah, the strategy is actually pretty cool. So yeah, either, I mean yeah. Sorry, go ahead, David. Well, because the show the show is so focused on science, but like I think if they if they implement the strategy well, then like then it's fine. And then whatever happens after Sakasa, like I hope they go more into the science, like Senku having to build like I don't know, like like some better building or technology or maybe build a car or whatever i mean I'm, yeah so yeah because i mean i because definitely like in the steps of like war i wouldn't have thought like uh basically like compact food as being a very high priority yeah well but it does oh, make no. sense uh, it, it makes sense oh, i'm not yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Not, I'm not a strategic mind <laughs> you need to play more, no, more play you, you, you obviously sure. never invaded russia in the winter trend oh i, yeah. I haven't that's that's on my list <laughs> But yeah, uh, I would basically just be a follower of Sukasa, basically just save me. I'll do I'll do I'll do work exactly. just, you know. Don't let me die. But then you'd right. be the, the first one to betray him when you realize that all oh, the American ships are coming. Or the me. first one to die. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I think I'm good. Yeah. yeah. So good. good episode for Dr. Stone. So we're excited for the rest of the season. So that'd be it for Dr. Stone. And then we got the second um uh guest sequel airing this week is uh the slime show slime tensei whatever season two oh, part one God. so right. yes. why, why do you say that tone straight why do you not sound excited ah uh, i mean it, it's fine i just think it's it's not as good as like the hype behind it you know oh yeah i, no, I, I totally agree with you at that point yeah i mean it's cool to see kind of like development and like uh in you know whatnot but because uh, when you know when you, when it's like it's like oh reincarnated as a slime this guy's like rarely ever a slime he's just in his human form now yeah it's what are you like, talking about he started off the episode as a slime I, but he's not doing anything the only thing he's done is like if is, is fight it for it was it Ifrit? Am I just basically by <laughs> is it just because it was like a fire thing from the first season? And I'm just uh, calling Ifrit, it Ifrit? And then there was the orc king that he devoured as well. And then there no, was, but he uh, fought as like a normal like his human form at that point. You know, can um, we really call it a slime that much anymore? No, it's. It's that thing. I don't know, it's just like, it, what? What's the word? Like power creep? Like it's just like, anime or, or like, writing. It's the anime writing just always like power creeping. Yeah, they had it at the beginning, and then he be. <laughs> it's like, oh, another form, human form. Oh, let's just go with that. But continue mm-hmm. to call it reincarnated as a slime. It's technically still a slime. But yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember the other stuff that happened. Um. What, what, so I'm basically, blanking. like, so was it? He made a a truce with like the one of the other demon lords, and now they're just they're, oh, they're setting yeah. like the, the the diplomat missions to each other, just try to I guess make try just establish a trade route or whatever. So and You're then and then the two two of the generals like got cocky and now we're just having a fight. So. Dude, I I I forgot so much things of this show. I, I still like my one of my favorite characters is definitely the uh, like the the wolf, uh, Renge. Is it his name? R- Rung. Ranga, whatever. Ranga, yeah, Ranga, R- Ranga. Ranga? Ranga yeah. yeah, yeah, he's still like one of my favorite characters. He's awesome. Even that, like that, the dopey looking, uh, the orc guy, one. The, orc the guy, guy, yeah, the guy Wait, who he looks didn't, like, normal. Maybe, he just, yeah, he does like the shadow shit though. He like, jumps in through shadows and stuff, where he's actually really badass. Uh, that, that guy's awesome as well. But um, no, I, I think I'm I'm pretty sure the first episode they took it kind of fairly slow because I'm sure there's a lot of people like me who forgot a lot of the stuff from the first season. And was kind of hoping for a recap episode of the first season. I don't think, I don't think I they show me a recap. Like it's probably not, but it would have helped for our purposes. But that's uh, also very selfish. I don't think they show me <laughs> it. No. Yeah, I mean, no. other with the introduction of more eye candy and other characters, um, I think it uh, yes. started out just fine. 
Um, oh yeah, I mean it's, although, like, it's generic, very generic, but I have no like really complaints about it. Yeah, although like you guys mentioned though, uh, yeah, it was kind of lackluster for me with the with the opening. It's the first episode, though. They either go out with a huge bang, or they just kind of like ease you into it. Okay. No, because to be fair, like Stone Wars, right? Like Doctor Stone, like it started out great. Like you already got this momentum building up, yes. and you got the action starting already. And then with this, you kind of do like a slight background story of what it is, and then you're kind of given the the plot or the main objective of this season or this arc or whatever. Mm-hmm. You did lead off, or you did end the episode with you know like two big fights happening, but. Uh, overall, the the presentation and execution of everything, it, it kind of left me just kind of saying, eh, like it's it's whatever. See, I don't see why there's so much hype behind it. The thing that like that I noticed too is like there's like whenever like anime tries to do like have a character in a leadership leadership position, they focus so much on diplomacy. They're so focused yeah. on like like relationships and trying to like be like dip- diplomatic and like neutral t- towards other parties. Like it's. It's something you notice a lot, and like there's, mm. I guess, I think it's some something of the Japanese culture where they're just super polite about like trying to meet people for the first time, or whatever. So, okay. so, so that's why I noticed okay. too, like how how slow like like the main character takes things. Oh, I mean, he's OP. He can, and he's befriended like with yeah. demon lords. Like they keep he's, saying he's, how he's, he's like bad. he's struggling and mm. has to watch out for demon lords, but he's still pretty OP. So. Well, he has a demon lord. He's befriended a demon lord because yeah. of, was it food or some or he because he was a friend or I, I don't know something that was really weird. Yeah, and um, then I, I kind of remembered why I didn't really have too much hope for this show or high expectations of the show because by watching this episode, I kind of remembered like this is more of a a slice of life isekai to me. Basically, it kind of is. Yeah, it kind of yeah. just like casually it's, going it's through city a building now. too. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah i guess at this point yeah but like even before with season one you're kind of just like slowly going through the steps as of an isekai and then once he became like he had a humanoid form i guess or when he finally developed the, the, the city or the town that he has right now uh nothing he did really felt important it was just kind of just the he, daily life of he's, he's, he doesn't have any specific goal he's just like just reacting to whatever is happening to him right so, that's pretty true so i guess i guess like if you're into that. that kind of slower paced show I think that's I think that's why like, we like we are not like as hyped up as other people. It's just like it's just it's yeah, it's just that it's like a life like feel. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But hey, that one human apparently is uh pretty strong for being a human. That the ran up that, that part of the from the first season, I completely oh, forgot. Yeah. Where yeah, they... he's been he's been training after the the the, the kaijin. Yes, which experience. makes yeah. which oh. makes sense. But it's like it's crazy how they actually got like a human that strong though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. So that's kind of cool to see. But I mean, I don't like. I, I really don't hate the show. I don't like like really like think it's like that great of a show either. Even, but it's just like kind of middle of the road. Yeah. Kind of, uh, it's, no, yeah, I, it's I, I gener- very generic. Kind I of agree with you, but for well. some reason, like it's super popular, even amongst like yeah. anime critics. It I is. don't understand why that. Like why even the critics love it. So yeah, I, I don't know. It's I don't know. That's all I really got though. Yeah. Yeah. So I think we just yeah that's all we really need to talk about just slime show, uh second season. Yep. And so we'll move on to our next show. Um, I guess we can go next with uh B stars. Oh, you want to take yes. that away, cool. Yeah. So man, B stars are starting to pick up. There's a lot of things happening in the background now. Um, which is kind of weird because of how episode mm-hmm. one started. You didn't really think those could be. Uh, much happening other than the the, the ghost that's been haunting the the school or whatever. Uh, but yeah, we get introduced to a new character, the security <laughs> guard, and then we also get introduced to a new like main objective, right? Like when we said that Lewis was looking onto bigger, better things, this guy became a mob boss. So yeah, that's so cool. cool. Like I think he he might actually be one of my favorite anime characters in like a long time. Like I love Lewis. I think he's super interesting. Yeah, I, I can kind of see why Haru likes the guy. You know, he, he's he's pretty capable, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I suppose, and everyone loves a, a like a good villain like Mal Boss. So I guess that's is fine. he really a villain though? I mean, I mean, at this point, you would imagine if you're a mob boss, you're you're kind of a bad. Yeah, guy. but he's I mean, he's a mob boss as a means to an end because he's trying to help herbivores, right? I mean, that's what he's doing because his philosophy went to a kind of a winner or loser. Uh, philosophy, right? So it I don't think he really cares about 
I don't think he cares about like good and evil anymore. He just cares about like survival of the fittest in a sense. Like that's the mindset he has right now. But he is not wrong. I mean, if he can help the herbivores and get like, at, at least if he can like take on this, you know, um, black market meat selling thing, like if he could eradicate that, I mean, technically he'd be kind of screwing over the carnivores, but it's better for the herbivores. So even though he's only focusing on them, I mean, it's, it's not, it doesn't make him evil or like, you know what I mean? It's not hurting the other party. It's just helping the herbivores. I don't know if it makes any sense. Like, I don't know how to describe it because I don't quite know what he's going for myself yet either. Well, the, the way, uh, like the interpretation I got from what his segment was is, you know, it's uh strongest five and then the weakest is just whatever right mm -hmm. uh so he's kind of just disregarding the group right people mm -hmm. who are useless uh whether they be herbivore or carnivore and to me if you're not willing to save everyone and you're just trying to look out for like the strongest or like a certain group to me that makes you kind of a bad guy i don't really think you would be well, hero in that case i'm just so confused because i feel like him only caring about st the strong is kind of incongruous to like what we've seen of his character so far i feel like he would want to elevate i, I hear okay this is not what was said in the episode but how i feel about him is that i feel like he would want to elevate everybody who is willing to have more of an equal society like those are the strong ones whereas like he might consider like the carnivores who rely on this meat market, like the weak ones. Like, I don't know if his definition of weak and strong are the same as what we're thinking. Mm. I mean, I could be wrong. I'm, I'm really like getting, I'm like, I'm digging into the character and I'm probably, this is probably like a little bit of wish fulfillment on my end too. But, yeah, um, at this point we're kind of just grasping that straws to try to figure out like, what's really well, hard. I just feel like it was like, I don't, I, okay. So like if I'm analyzing what happened from the first season, I don't understand how he got to where he is mindset wise of what he was saying in this episode. Cause I mean, basically, I mean, ba from what I remember from the first season, he was sold, something happened to his parents. I don't know. He was sold into the black market. Right. And he got out of it by the skin of his teeth. Yeah. He was and he's, by one of the, like the more powerful mm -hmm. politicians. Yeah. Yeah. And I would think that he would want to help people who'd been in that situation. Like, it just seems like such a stretch for him to be like, well, you know, just fuck the weak. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know where but it, we'll see where the season goes i really can't i don't know for sure but i just find his his arc interesting and as for that new character that you mentioned the snake yeah Hexon that was really that was a weird ass introduction scene <laughs> i feel like she's one of those like sunday uh, he. i thought it was a he really i thought it was a female i don't know really <laughs> I, don't, I was getting this like sunday female vibe and then uh I don't okay. know, maybe because it's a snake, and I just assume all snakes are females. But yeah, like she was getting, like the snake was getting felt up, and they got nervous or like scared or whatever, and it like it ran away. And it turns out like it was leading Lagoshi on to to uh, be the next like hero uh, because I I guess he has hidden potential inside of him, mm -hmm. and kind of what they're mentioning in the very beginning, right? Like uh, heroes are born, not made. So it looks like he has that potential inside of him, and she's trying to bring it out by making him solve this. And coincidentally, by doing so, it's going to make him the next B star. So I guess that's kind of uh, going to be the main objective of this season. Yeah, which is something I was going to bring up, this concept of a B star. From the first season, I kind of thought it was basic. <laughs> I had, in my head, basically thought of it as like the most popular kid in school title. Yeah. I mean, that's what I thought it was, but it seems to be a much more political term than that. Right. Like, it seems like all of society is it really, this is important to the group as a whole, not just like a high school thing. And that's really weird to me. Like, I just don't understand what purpose it's supposed to serve. Well, after watching this episode, I realized that I forgot a lot about what happened in season one. Um, mm -hmm. but it looks like the whole, like, immersion of carnivores and herbivores, it's, mm -hmm. it's fairly new. And I think that's what the B-Star is supposed to represent. Oh, is it? Yeah, like how like the mixture of the, the two different types of uh -huh. uh, animals can coexist together. Um, so it's that's why they do this okay. star, right? And okay. I guess uh, the school that they're in is the most prestigious one. Mm -hmm. So if they can't produce one, and then what does that show about society in the sure, future? Sure, you know? sure. so, okay, um, that makes sense. Yeah, but I don't know. I think if they can't have Lagoshi, I think this is where they're going to push uh, Juno as well, the female mm -hmm. wolf. Okay. That's what I was just thinking. Yeah, it's gonna be the next B star, but I mean, with how she, she doesn't actually believe in any of that stuff. She is very selfish. 
Uh, Don't you think? The way she was chasing after Haru, she knew she knew that she wasn't going to attack her, but she knew that the that Haru would be scared anyways because of their natural status. But she did it anyways. She didn't care. She wanted she she wanted information. Well, I can't remember what she wanted in that second, but she chased her anyways because she wanted something. Right. No, that's that's true too. But you know, as as a teenage girl, I guess it's fair game. I'm not I'm not quite sure. Yeah. Well, okay, so we've got the introduction of the B-Star. Was there anything else in the episode that was... There was a lot that happened, I felt like, in this episode, actually. Yeah, so we have to go back to the devouring, which is what happened in Season 1, I guess, when uh, the alpaca was mm. eaten by a carnivore, but they never Ted? saw the history. Tam? Tem. Tim or... Yeah, Tem. T-E-M. Yep. Yeah. And then, so they're trying to solve that mystery now, too. And I kind of thought they solved it already, but I guess they didn't. So mm -hmm. that's going to be the main focus for this arc. Yeah, it seems uh, like it. I didn't think they solved it. Nope, nope, they haven't. They're, that's no. what they're trying to figure out right now. Because mm -hmm. uh, I thought they were referring to the incident that happened at the festival, not what happened. Oh, like, okay. Before, right? Uh, yeah. I believe they, uh, he was actually devoured in like episode one or two of last season. One. Yeah, so it, it was like very early on. So I completely yeah. forgot about that. See, uh, I never forgot about it. So I've been sitting here this whole time, like, I don't give a shit about this romance that's happening. Like, what, what, who devoured this poor, adorable alpaca? Like, why, why would you introduce that, like, season one, episode one, and then not touch it again until, like, way later on? It's so weird. Who cares about an alpaca? Other than the fact that it's cute, what? I guess. Who cares about What's the alpaca? What's wrong with you? You heartless. Like, uh, like you can't no, imagine no, that alpacas being devoured is fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, do you not eat burgers? Do you not eat meat? You know, carnivores have needs too, you know? So, yeah, well, and I, even, even Lewis is on board with that, you know? Like, <laughs> like you, you gotta, you just gotta survive. Like, what do you want to do? That toad in the store when he went there, all mob boss like, and he's like, you yeah. know, you're in a deer meat store, right? Right. Like, so, <laughs> and <laughs> moving on. God. You want me to help you or not? Um, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. Like I said, I, I didn't really care much for the character. And then, uh, I mean, I don't even care much for Haru either. Like, I'm all about just Lagoshi and then how yeah. this guy is just going to be the next B-star. So, Yeah, I like Lagoshi and I really like Lewis. I think they both have very interesting uh, stories ahead of them. Haru, I'm really not sure how she's going to fit in. Like, I have nothing against her. I just feel like the only thing that she's contributed to this so far contributes to like the romance aspect of the show and mm -hmm. i i mean i just don't find that super compelling in this particularly well as as an innocent person like like as innocent as lagoshi is or naive i guess you can say mm -hmm. uh you need someone to kind of uh like help you grow up or mature and I, that's haru's main um main mm -hmm. purpose in the story maybe yeah i we, mean for sure doesn't need it. So if I don't know how he's going to get negotiated to kind of grow up and see the world outside of a school environment. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably her only main purpose of this uh, show. And yeah, I don't really care much for the romance either because I do think it's kind of weird, but it, mm -hmm. it is what it is. So. Is that everything? That uh, happens? Yeah, I think as of right now, that, that's yeah. all that's happened. But it's starting so. to wrap up though. So it's getting more. Yeah, exciting. I really like this season. I'm very excited for it. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's it. All right. Yeah. So that, that'll be it for B Stars. And then uh, we'll move right on to Re Zero. Yeah. <sighs> oh, man. <laughs> Welcome, Brian. <laughs> hello, Brian. Hello, hello. Hi, Brian. <laughs> Brian, you want to go to your thoughts on this week's episode, Re Zero? <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, God. I feel like you don't like it either. Okay. <laughs> Brian, we can't hear you. I don't know if you're trying to speak. Anyway, yeah, I know he just oh, got on and we're like, Brian, right, share your thoughts. All right. <laughs> on on ReZero? Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh well, this moment was a long time coming, I guess. <laughs> Wait, Dude, I was mean? so sad. I was, I was so me. sad. Team Red is gone, man. Oh, <laughs> Fuck. Okay. oh that oh, way. Oh, no, no, no. Oh. They, there's still hope, all right? <laughs> oh, God, man. Uh, I let Subaru die. I didn't believe. Dead. Oh god, I, I don't have much to say. About okay. You guys don't even like Subaru. Wouldn't you be I, happy if like she ended up with somebody else if you like her that much? I really don't like the show. <laughs> like, okay, dude, man, that whole conversation with Subaru and Amelia was so weird and awkward. Like, I don't, yeah, I did not like. Like, I walked away. 
Like, whatever. <laughs> whatever <laughs> I've gone about five minutes too long, and I was just like, oh my god. Honestly, yeah. wait, what what are they saying it. to each like, other? Like, like especially when Amelia was being really insecure. I understand how she feels, but holy fuck, it just oh, it got god. annoying. Like, how many times did they have to go back and forth? Where he's like, I just love you. She's like, you're a liar, but I love you. But you're a liar. And she's yeah. like, oh my god. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Please. But there's something there's something I said to Stratton, which is I think the reason that they were like repeating themselves so much. Well, not, not I, her, I, but more of uh, it was more on Subaru. But it was both of them. They were both being really repetitive about their various things. But I actually think it's more important that it was that it was Subaru that was saying it over and over again. Because what I was telling Stratton was when we saw Sartella or Satella or whatever that person's Satella. name is, mm -hmm. she kept on saying "I love you, I love you, I love you" over and over. That was like her big thing. It was super annoying and lasted forever and i and i hated it and then that's basically exactly what this conversation was but like from subaru and i once again just feel like somehow some way amelia has to be that girl somehow because i feel like that's why they were being so repetitive here is to like parallel that mm -hmm. or am i, I crazy right. i have no well, idea i mean that's, 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 maybe that's, that's where she got her reasoning <laughs> Like, reasoning well, about <laughs> real. real quick, but what was the thing you were saying about Amelia and what you think is going to happen in the end with her? Who, me? Yes. I don't know. I forgot. What did I say? You said she was going to become evil. Well, yeah, but, well, because Satel is evil, kind of. Kind of. So that, that's, like, that's like the main theory of like ReZero fans, basically. Like, I, that it, like, she, yeah, she is Satella. We just don't know like what's the connection or... Yeah. Know, reveal it. So. Well, I don't know. When I when I read it online, I get confused when I read online because there's so much out with the light novel and there's I don't know, stuff that people know and I, I'm not sure. I get too scared to look it into it too thoroughly. Yeah, it's a dangerous game. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> True. <laughs> I mean, that was great and all, but can we talk about my boy Otto? Otto. I mean, uh, yeah. for me, Otto That'd raised you right quick there. in my, my character book. That's the man. Yeah. He can talk to animals. Oh, yeah. yeah. Dude, that guy has a tragic past, dude. Yeah, Holy right? Shit. That was rough. Fuck that blessing. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, dude. Can you imagine, though, like, growing up, not being able to, like, I guess being in a mute, kind of, I guess, until he learned how to write and then kind of collect or use his powers. Well, okay, uh, well... More it wasn't even that much of a problem until his fucking little brother like ruined it for him like like snitching <laughs> on his friend saying like yep. like oh, my fucking brother has, man. has a power yeah. let me and then he shows me and of course like i don't know what i don't know if this is like japanese culture or whatever where like this weird like like oh you like you you brought the the plague to us it's your fault it's like bro he didn't do anything but for some reason <laughs> like this happens a lot in anime and i don't know if it's like a cultural thing or whatever like it's this done weird, so poorly though. Like, mm. I yeah, know. I didn't really get that part. So, like, what do you think Otto said when he brought like all the bugs to the town? He probably they don't. Yeah, I think he just meant like, just hey, can you show yourself or something? And he probably and didn't then just it. all the bugs showed. And yeah. they took it as you know a swarm. Yeah. Of, he didn't probably didn't mean it. Then time. like, it's just yeah. anime. It's just like they always. It's this weird like, I don't know what's like where oh, people just get unfairly blamed for a lot of things. Like you caused this. It's like. No, mm -hmm. you did. What? Yeah. what? Oh. I thought I thought for sure that he was basically just gonna leave like his like younger brother because his older brother was saying like you know don't show anybody this ability, mm -hmm. and the little brother was just like hey I'm not lying you could do that stuff right I thought like you know like Otto was just, which he should just like walked away yeah just, just do like, a complete 180 walk <laughs> away and say a thing like no I'm out yeah. later oh, man, basically I'm hurt him like you gotta make sure your younger brother's not a liar you know? no no, no, no. Yeah. Well, wait, wait, but, but but you have to basically like do like the fade away when you're walking away and then the backgrounds you see his little brother just getting beat up. <laughs> oh my god! That's hilarious. Yeah, um, that's what oh you, god. That's Fred, what you, you don't. You don't have any younger siblings, do you? I do. My sister. Wait, she's younger than you? Yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> older one. Today we learned. Oh, oh my! Right. Today we learned. All right. Today we cool learned. You mean? Horrible, must have been a horrible brother growing up. Dude, what the what hell? You mean? You never oh, leave your bro. younger sibling hanging, bro. Hey, my sister you never leave me, your bro. younger sibling. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. I never let her hang. I mean, it's not yeah, Shred, Shred, Shred didn't need to leave her hanging because he was already hanging in the house playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> oh God, you're right, Brian. <laughs> why, why, why are we talking about that? He's now? living that. He's living that bottom tier life. <laughs> yeah, dude. bottom tier. Shit, my boy to, like, toads top of the world again. back in the day, dude. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, I was a god. No. I was, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, like, because you have to understand, right? Like. If his older brother was the only one I was able to like kind of come to understanding or just try to try to understand Otto, and that's what brought Otto out of that like that uh despair, right? Mm -hmm. So like why would you would you ever think that he would do that to his younger brother? 
right? As an older brother, with what example he was shown or given, like yeah, That's he's kind of like you know back of his own. Oh brother. yeah, I'm, I'm good point, not good point. Yeah, I'm not disagreeing. That. I'm just saying like little brothers being a little shit. Just I, no, I mean to be fair, he's he's a little kid, and of course he wants to show everyone that hey, my brother's special. He can do this. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if I've just been watching too many shows with like betrayals and stuff, but <laughs> when I was first watching There's the so episode with, with yes. Otto and his older brother, I was like, okay, so the older brother knows, is he going to like abuse this in some way for like monetary game or like some well, crazy oh, thing? Yeah. Yeah. When it didn't go down the road, I was like, oh, okay, you know, <laughs> yeah. wipe the sweat off my brow. He's not getting betrayed. They're but not does, doing him dirty. But it does remind you, like, I mean, this is not like a, a kind world. This is like, yeah. un unlike other like, yeah, guys yeah. where like the main characters always have fun, like this is, yeah. this is, uh, like medieval world like yeah, so. that, that's why it could have went justin's way <laughs> it could have easily gone yeah. justin's way he's oh, both justin's ways would have worked i mean he still got he still got <laughs> run out of town but that, that one mm -hmm. one girl so man fuck that hoe <laughs> yeah man dated <laughs> eight other dudes who the hell <laughs> like man. bro wow. it's supposed to, it's something's supposed never changed it's always supposed to be bros before hoes and this man <laughs> just didn't want to believe it She's over here sleeping with eight other dudes and shit. And he's like, nah. <laughs> Impossible. Yeah. Like, oh I like how that was God. the final straw. We, like, all right, gotta go. Yeah, but besides, <laughs> besides the flashback, though, like him, like, putting up the fight against, uh, like, uh, Gabriel, Garfield. Whatever, Garfield. Yeah, Garfield. Like, that was really epic, too. Like, he, he mm -hmm. ran him for a long time and kept, like, throwing those, like, those fire bombs. Oh, yeah. Although, I feel like they... They made him weaker in this episode because I remember when they first transformed, he just easily took out Ram. Yeah, like, he, he, did, yeah. Made, yeah. he waited a while to transform Otto, too. Yeah. So he, I don't know if that's the, the first time he transformed, he cut up Otto in half. So yeah, I don't know what happened right, there. Yeah. <laughs> and Ram's not, so, that, not, Ram's not even that strong. She's like she's so underpowered and she was still she's like, overpowered him now. Yeah, and she could realize that you know in the episode where she's like beaten him so many times before, but this time he was starting to get the edge on her. Yeah, so I, I thought that was pretty weird. But yeah. yeah, different timeline, man. Yeah, the, maybe something else happened in the timeline that made him power up. Who knows? Like what? <laughs> like, I don't know. It's like, what? The, 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 the power the, of emotion, you know, his emotion power is strong enough. Does, so like, <laughs> does a uh, does the time of day matter at all? I don't know. I, I don't know. He's just grasping his scalp so. here. Does he get yeah. Does he get more power for during the full moon? You're I don't know. Uh, I'm kidding. I, I, we'll, we'll leave that. We'll leave that to B stars, all right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right oh, B stars. My bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. different show, wrong show. Yeah, we right, talked right. about that. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm just hoping, like, I just want the show to move along. Like, I hope. That's I hope, what the show did. I hope, like, no, not the end, but like, I hope, like, the main no, thing is end. like, like Subaru and Amelia are finally together. So hopefully, you can put that behind us and finally move on with the story, because that's what Watch I'm here that. for. I, th I think but, it was like Taylor said. I'm really over kind of the whole sanctuary arc. I'm like, all right cool watch subaru dies once more and then basically all this is forgotten again. i mean for me it's like i'm still more interested in the lore than the characters so i just want more and finish on the lore so. i see and I, th I, I mean and that's point, why i really like the witches because like they're so important to the lore so but but at this point i don't think you're gonna get any more lore from the sanctuary you have to like leave this yeah, area leave. with the environment yeah. yep get the fuck out <laughs> yeah oh god but i mean it should be over right because they 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 did their 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 five minutes of you know whatever the hell that was and uh, now they can move on. Well, and Garfield's outside waiting for well, them. Well, do we know how many more parts of the trial Amelia has? Uh, at least two more, right? Yeah, right. She didn't she didn't finish the first one yet. Like that's and there's like one oh, three trial. Right. Oh, you're right. <laughs> yeah, because you're the right. first yeah, yeah, out. The first one is the is the the mem the past memories and then yep. yeah. Yeah. probably the second one was that Subaru failed. She'll, she'll probably like fly through that one now. Since she got Hopefully. her memories back. Hopefully. Oh, fuck. That's Watch, right. They, yeah. they draw it out for like the, the manner of the season, and then Please, no. it but, really felt like nothing again happens. <laughs> I mean, it will. Because the other thing, too, is like they're, they're trying to push the fact that like they don't want Subaru to reset this. So it better yeah. be like actual, real, like well, canon timeline now. Didn't they say, too, in like one of the previous episodes from before, you know, the break that Subaru is going to try to kill some of these other like sacred beasts, like the rabbits and stuff, and then they just completely. Like drop the rabbit uh, line. He only has, you know he only has to kill, comes later, maybe. He only has to kill a rabbit. Oh, well, actually, wait, no, I don't know when they when they come though. I know it's after winter when after the trial because the first it, it's only winter because of Puck, right? But Puck is gone, so I don't yeah, think any so. more winter. But I don't know if the rabbits are still gonna show up. Wait, it was yeah. winter because of him? I'm pretty sure. Wasn't Holy shit, it? I forgot all about that. I have no idea. He's the yeah, one I can't I remember because in season one when it was winter at the mansion, it's because Puck. 
yeah, yeah. Oh, that's true. Okay. oh that was such a sick part too not to dwell on the past but <laughs> yeah. i love that that ending when subaru oh. just gets decapitated oh yes that's poor true. subaru <laughs> yeah there's there's tons of unresolved things that have to be uh done. right uh i we just need to move on at this point because <laughs> i feel like they've dwelled on this specific problem for too forever long. forever yeah. Yeah. definitely and, and, you know, I go ahead i don't like i just hope subaru dies and you can kind of <laughs> Well, not like die start all the way over, but like at this point, you're you're, oh. you're already kind of worried that whenever he dies, it's going to go all the way back to the beginning. So I'd want to see a, like a point where he dies, and we can see a new checkpoint because that'll give you like this uh, like this closure, right? That okay, we can move on. We're progressing. I, I think the checkpoint that's going to happen is when Amelia uh, finishes the first. Um, yeah, I mean, hopefully, uh, trial. That's hopefully. at least some progress. You would right. think. I mean, it makes sense, right? Checkpoint. You complete a major objective. Checkpoint. So we'll see. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. But uh, F the show. <laughs> so I'll I'll say that besides this episode, like I'm so uh, overall season two overall, I'm still enjoying. Even though like it's, I understand why people like are getting tired of it. So. Hmm. I'm Fair. just kidding. My problem is just that that guy named Subaru. Like, that guy just needs to leave. Gee, oh, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Relax. Well, Relax. What, does anybody else even actually have issues with Subaru? Or is it just, I mean, like, is this his fault? No, he's just an we're getting sick of this. Or just trying to causing no. shit, you mean? Technically, it's his fault because he's yeah, the one that's <laughs> So if he just would stop dying, we could move forward. Oh my god, no. <laughs> now you're just, now, Fred, I, okay. I would listen to you, Fred, if you weren't such a horrible older brother. But you know, <laughs> you're not your word. Oh so, god. That just you're... makes all opinions invalid now. <laughs> what we're yeah. going with. Yeah. You, you've lost your, your, your character uh, uh, redemption there. So the like auto, but you know, F a little kid. No, no. They're just, just selling out auto like that and just, you know, worse not than knowing the consequences. Here. You are worse oh. than Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Holy. <laughs> That's uh, that's a brutal claim, sir. I take offense to this. Oh well, well you should. <laughs> you horrible person. <laughs> oh, God. All right, all right. Anyway, I'm done. Uh, are we done with yeah. the show? Yeah, we're, we're, <laughs> well, God, we're, 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 Hopefully, next will be better, and I can finally say I can not be the only one that still enjoys the show. You will. So that's <laughs> it for ReZero. <laughs> Uh, we're going next to Log Horizon. That's the other uh, sequel that premiered this week. Oh, All right, God. so what I said to David, I'm in trouble. I forgot everything that happened last season. Um, <laughs> I'm not liking how they started this, to be honest. Like, what? I'm not liking how they started out the, the episode. Uh, I mean, I'm sure it would have been fine if it was a continuation from the end of last season. Okay, so, but because I haven't watched last season kinda, for years, I'm screwed. Well, actually, Brian, do you remember a, a lot of what happened the past few seasons? Fuck. Okay. No. Let me try. Let me try my I'm best. To, let me try my best oh, to remember. So God. basically, like, so like each guild, uh, they combine together to make like this this sort of like group. Next to the round. Yeah. But it's like it's not like <laughs> like like they said like, it's not really like a government group. It's just like it's just cooperation meant to like make like the Akita better. But um, what was it like? So let me try to think, because because the the main the main issue is like the disappearance thing, like because we had we had Krusty go to the, the Chinese server because he's yeah. I think I forgot what guild he's part of, but he's like he's you know, DDD DDD DDD. <laughs> yep. I forgot what. Yes, what, I know exactly what that stands. I forgot for. what that that one is for, but <laughs> like, but it's like the disappearance, and then also, um. They, they, they kind of touch upon in this episode too how like there's other people just disappearing completely not even on any other server and mm-hmm. and uh, Shiro brought at that point that oh they might be back in reality who knows um the other part is it's like is uh the princess because they're part of the NPC world where um they're the, the area that Akiba is in like they're on, technically it's in the territory of like that that kingdom where the princess belongs to and Krusty was like trying to be talk to her and be di- diplomatic towards her and her kingdom as well. So, Dude. like when they said Krusty, I had no idea who it was. When they said he disappeared, I forgot all about it. He's, he's like he's, like he's like the guy. He's like the the knight or the paladin that wears glasses. Yeah, I, but... I, I I remember like after kind of like the flashbacks when they were kept saying Krusty, Krusty. I was like, Dude, who the fuck is Krusty? He's, and I forgot how he's, many. He's, how he was like the one I actually remember because he was really he's really important to like like he's a really important guild leader and 
like that that round table like like they um they basically meant to make him like the, the de facto leader whatever didn't he become evil at some point or not evil but like they didn't know like what he was trying to do no not yeah, evil was... it's just like the princess like she like had doubts about him because even though she's in love with him she didn't know much about his character and then she saw that like even though he comes off he's he's plight to her like in real i think in reality he's, he's like he's he likes battle he like he likes fighting that's why he's a leader and so like he had to show her like that side of of, of him that's like the only other not really evil just like he's not like this this like he, like this gentleman yeah, that, he, that, he, well, that he she thought off, he was he comes off as cold but he's actually a nice guy and then it took her a while to he, kind of figure that out and eventually she kind of fell for him in a sense so that's why in this episode she was kind of just waiting for him to come back. Um, but yeah, there's there's so many things going on with this episode that even I had problems trying to figure out what like what they were doing because I, I kind of remember how season two ended, although I don't really remember like all the main details. But I feel like they're just uh, like moving too fast, and with such a long hiatus they had between season two and now, you you, you had to do something to kind of bring the the audience back into the story. And I was completely lost, and yeah. no, it's, I, it, it's I, rough. I get that. Um, I kind of like this episode. I actually kind of remember more details, but I kind of see where they're going. Where like the whole the whole issue from last season is like the the brown table is falling apart because there's no leadership. But even and now the big the so besides like trying to find Krusty, like um, the big plot now is or the big thing that problem is that is um the guy leaving the table is is um mm-hmm. the the seceding from the table the guy that man fuck that guy the guy that the the, the, the princess was supposed to marry guy, but yeah, the one the, yeah. the the arranged marriage for the princess that guy he's in the the rival kingdom he that and they sometimes fight with the princess's kingdom and so there might be if there's a war like you know like the adventures might get caught up in that you talking about that that creepy looking fuck uh they haven't introduced they haven't the, introduced the, the her fiance oh so. Who's, the, who's the creepy looking dude then? What, like they keep showing. What creepy looking dude? Who are you I don't talking? know. He's like in like a he's in like a weird looking hat. It's like a he's like wearing like purple gear and stuff. I, I, he wasn't in the the episode of itself. I don't think. I think he was in the preview. I don't know what you're talking about. He's like, he has like giant eyes. Okay. Anyway. No, I don't know who okay, you're talking we'll, about. All right, we'll talk about him in the future. Okay. Hopefully. So, <laughs> well, I'll be like, dude, who the fuck is this guy? That's what um, I feel like. But like, I feel I feel so bad because I know this is a good show. But I can't remember shit. Well, I mean, and no, people had Christmas season two, like they did. I don't remember because I I felt like it lost focus with like the whole MMO vibe. Like there's oh, you mean the bards, the bard? I mean, well, and the, <laughs> and, to, and the, the kids' dungeon was like dragged on for too long too. Did right, but but then this is this is what I was talking about like last week, right? Like season one, I thought was great, but it was also one of the the first of its kind in a sense, where it was kind of a new. I mean, it was it was the better. It's what Sword Art should have been like. Right, and then season two just made made everything like uh, the the plot very convoluted. They were just like all over the place, and especially with how they ended it, I I can see why season two has a lot of criticism. And then season three, you're just kind of like working off the of season two, yeah. which had problems of its own. And I, I think that's where the problem lies. The animation wasn't like upgraded at all. It still feels Same. very Same. like generic. Old. Yeah, generic. Uh, Storyline is still very convoluted, and then you got like a bunch of like events going like just just hitting you in the face and you don't know like where it's or where, where it came from where it's going and i think that's where the confusion was uh and if you're gonna if that's the same problem that season two have and you're gonna work off of that and not try to fix it i think you're gonna have a bad season so i, I don't know about that i mean i, I still I, i'm still gonna like assume it's gonna go well I, I'm, I'm gonna guess that like the next few episodes like it'll kind of like rejog my memory for like a lot of things. Also, I saw Justin sent us like a link of Reddit that I, mm. I'm sure gives us like a good like a uh, um, recap of like what happened. So uh, uh, hopefully it won't. It won't. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I read it all and I had watched seasons one and two and I still didn't know what the hell was going on. So okay. So yeah, it just sounds like they're trying to do too much at once. Then yeah. Yeah. I right, well, I appreciate the effort, but it just needs better execution. So. Oh yeah. Dude. Also, opening sucks. That song was terrible. I don't remember, I don't remember the opening. <laughs> all so. I remember is database. Like, oh, it's all about da- the database. Yeah, when you go from database I, to whatever I'm that like garbage one of, was. I'm like one of the few people who didn't care much about database. 
So honestly, I didn't care about it until Brian started singing. Database is pretty. Database is pretty hype. I don't like. I don't like, yeah, I don't like the, the fact that they English. just say database one. Yeah. No, you know, I, I, don't, I, don't like, that was it. I don't like English in that song. So. <laughs> Uh, of course you don't, David. So, there's only one thing you I really hate, have to... you hate English today, to me. Oh my God, yes, it's English. <laughs> um, oh, the only yeah. thing I have to say to you about this episode is, um, it's like that that one guy who was like basically like, I think his name was Eins, whatever. But like when he was like, yeah, because <laughs> so, like the guy who I, mean, I understand that each guild leader has to look after their guild and they have to look at uh -huh. their own people, but it's like. <sighs> I mean, I understand it's hard, like, getting together as a group like that, but it's, like, you're still... You have to think, like, about the, about the greater good and, like, trying to make this place better for everyone instead of trying to be selfish, which... which same thing with the other guy. The other guy who wouldn't give support... The, the Like, the rich guild that wouldn't give support to... To the guy asking for, like, irrigation money or whatever. It's, like, come on, bro. Help out, help out like, your fellow guild. Like, you're... Like, you need to, to cooperate with everyone. But then I don't, I don't, I don't like. At, oh, go ahead, Brian. As they say, man, money is the root of all evil. Because <laughs> that shit it is, is the most just, it's just, just so disgusting. I was like, man, fuck that guy. Like, yeah, you, <laughs> you just, just kept making excuses how like you didn't want to spend money. It's like, where do you guys spend your money in this world, man? Like the the food tastes shit, and huh? like you're just constantly. I think the novelty. No, no, they fixed that. No, they, oh, they, they fixed, fixed that. The they food. Okay. Yeah. Besides they that, though, the like food. they like the, I think the novelty of adventuring is wearing off for them. I think I think just they want to know like what's they're still trying to expo like explain what's happening just in the world. Just the fuck Because mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. Well, I, I guess like they're still gaining levels, but still like what do you what? There's no like end end game raid or I don't know what you do. So. Well, I think the point now is basically it's like because they don't know what happened with Krusty, like it, just like the possibility yeah. of getting out of that world and oh, maybe going back. Into, but like, like I was gonna say, I was say too, like Ainz, like how like he was trying to, um, but that's another thing I didn't agree with, like how he, because he felt weak, he had to rely on Krusty to do things for him. Like I didn't like that either because like you gotta be strong on your own too. You can't just like this is that arc now. You can't just rely stronger. on people to. to no, fight. I mean that's. Just that's that's just the problem with how the world is right now, right? There's no real leader, and then Krusty was that leader. And when you're just a group of mediators and you need help, because not not everyone has has it equal, right? You have people who are adventurers who who uh, don't have certain skill sets, so they're they're going broke. So that's why you know they're asking for help. And then if you are unlucky, you kind of need help. And that's where the government would come in or like the, the leader would come in and say, you know, I'm going to delegate this, this, and this resource to these people because they need it the most. And it's not really their fault. It's just the fact that, you know, their choice of well, skills is, does not help them. I guess. I, I understand he's he's coming from a bad position, but it just made it felt like he was, he wanted Krusty to help fight his battle for him just because he felt like he didn't, I don't know. He felt like he didn't have enough power. I don't know. Right. I just didn't agree with that. So, so um, and then like so, and I guess I understand from his position. Again, he's looking for his own guild, his own people. That's why he had to team up with the rival kingdom. But right. I just again, it's like when you think about like how how unstable it makes that group. Like you bring in so much like like potential problems by doing that, and like and if if and like these are the people that you need to rely on, like because I. You can't rely on. You can't just assume the event. The NPCs will be on your side. Like I, you should trust like your fellow like adventurers from the other world and these NPCs. No, again, I don't think you're being fair because when you're weak and like the group that's supposed to help everyone out evenly is not doing their part because their leader's not there anymore. What else are you gonna do, right? Are you just gonna starve to death, like re like resort to crime? You know, it's not like he's becoming like he's making a, a gang of bandits now and just robbing people, or whatever. Uh, so I feel like you're being a little bit too harsh on a guy, and he's doing what he has to to make sure his his group survives. I'm just giving just a little crazy. I don't put the blame fully on him. I like I blame like the other guy too, like the uh, the guy who won't give money. So, guys, I, I blame Krusty. This guy just leaving, and just not cutting it, and basically just not doing his work. Dude, it's not his fault. All right, some I'm kidding. Work <laughs> happen, I'm just kidding. Right? Yeah, friend's you guys just, are so his friend's just a hater. <laughs> Just hates, I'm, hates, I'm completely, hates, I'm hates completely Subaru, kidding. Subaru hates Krusty. Like, I actually don't. Rem hey, I don't hate Krusty. I don't remember him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Even worse. Whatever. Whatever, man. Uh, but yeah. But then again, though, just back to the show. Uh, I feel like 
the only people who would probably like it unless they pick it up is uh like people who were really fond of the show like back then so i think nostalgia is just gonna be a big driving factor otherwise i, I don't know i don't really see this uh this season like doing so well oh, i'm gonna finish it like it's um this far i didn't watch 50 50- Six episodes for no, no, forty-eight episodes for nothing. Oh, I Wait, was it fifty-two? I thought was it twenty sixteen or fifty? Oh, well, it maybe been. 20. Is it twenty-four, okay. twenty-six? So it's either Somewhere forty-eight around or around. fifty-two. But too much of my life gone. I'm gonna continue watching it. <laughs> I... Well, again, this is like Sword Art, right? You're just finish it because it's Sword Art or whatever. But I don't right? hate it like Sword Art, though. I well, actually, maybe, eventually, you will. Eventually, you I still, okay, I okay. still like um the setup of the world. Like, I like how they're trying to do much more MMO. Like vibe okay. better than every other like v- like MMO show. Like I so. saw no bard. I already saw no bards. Two thumbs up. <laughs> so I'm also I also like give this a shot just because I I am I am attached to like at the world I guess. Yes, I I am very attached to the character. Don't worry even though even though like the like <laughs> even though like they're they are trying to do too much at once right now. Yeah. So I, yeah, I don't know, man. Like it's it, it's going to be rough. But again, yeah. this no, is trying totally to give me point, though. Though. The sword art vibe, right? It was good at first, but now it's like, uh, it's, it's, it's not doing so hot. Yeah, no, I, I totally get get what you're saying. So, we'll see. I don't we'll see. that low, but yeah. But uh, yeah, I think that's it. So, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll see. So that's it for Lock Horizon. Um, more of them next. Uh, I guess to Mushoku Tensei. God. Not, I mean, I don't think we have much to say for this week's episode, except that you know, this man got bullied so hard, like. I don't know if bullying like that actually exists, but Maybe. man, all those all those people deserve <laughs> to die. Yes. Oh, the old limp dick. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, that's I'm rough, dude. I'm also, gonna, yeah. I'm also gonna take back from the previous episode where I, where I was like, man, that doesn't sound like too much. Like when I actually watched it and I talked to you guys, I think it was like after it aired because I didn't actually see it. I was like, dude, that. That etchiness wasn't bad at all. And then it just opens up, bam, etchiness, like, immediately. I was like, okay, this might be kind of tilting more towards etchiness, or a decent amount. But um, kind of like, I'm, I'm glad, though, that they just had it at the beginning. They covered it, and they moved on. Like, we didn't well, see it again. <laughs> you're assuming that it's not going to come back later when he's in, no, like, no, no, an adult. No, no, no. no, I just mean, like, no, I'm, I'm fine with, like, like, it being, like, a specific spot. But the thing is, like, they had it all together in one spot, and then they just kind of, like, moved on. Like it wasn't one of those that were just really poorly placed, like throughout the episode. They oh, basically yeah, just had it yeah, all no, together. Yeah, they they got their point across and they moved on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I think if anything, they gave good growth throughout this episode of like his fears of wandering outside, you know, the boundaries of the house that he currently the daily resides in. Of a shut in. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Strand would know. Yes. <laughs> oh, yes. God. I don't stress Dang. on that level though. Yeah, I got I got tied up to a school gate and basically. I mean, uh... with the pandemic, aren't we all shut-ins for the most part now? Oh, maybe not, not me. needs or to any extreme. Not me. Well, I'm always. Oh, out I, there. I actually think a majority of us have to leave the house. Oh. <laughs> I apologize. Yeah, we don't have we don't have home privilege like you you guys. Oh man. Wait. Wait. I spoke too soon. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna leave now. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs> yeah, no, but I actually thought like uh, the part where where like at first kind of like him like getting over his fear of actually like leaving the place, I I actually thought that was pretty intense too because I'm sure that would that would give him PTSD. Like he even realized that, like where it, like it just didn't make sense where it, but he was still having like the PTSD where mm-hmm. it's like almost like obviously mm-hmm. like before he kind of like got on the horse where it's just like where I just felt like he kind of knew like he was just being stupid about it like it, it was an obviously but he just kept seeing like those flashes. Yeah, I think that's a huge thing that like most people who kind of struggle with change as a whole is like they always know what needs to be done, but when it yeah. comes to actually putting that into action from like a physical, you know, body sense, that's yeah. something that's always kind that, of hangs that, up people. That's that's why yeah. there's that quote. It's uh simple, not easy. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. But especially like with his backstory, like that's like intense, like that, that seems like over the top, like whereas it's like that wouldn't yeah. be a like, I mean, legitimate thing. Like, and was but... it assumed that like his mom or dad died? Because that was the very beginning, right? At the funeral. Yeah. And, like, he didn't, like, he didn't show up. Yeah. Yeah. Like his yeah. main parents, once they were out of the picture, then then just kicked him out of the house. But it's like, yeah. mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, bullying is a big reason why, especially in Japan, why people become shut ins with Hikikomori. So, yeah. again, this is, oh. again, this is why the show, like, this is why Isekai, especially reincarnations, are popular because, like, it's that escape fantasy. Because you hate your life so much that you wish you could be reincarnated. True. Or another I mean, chance, in a sense. Yeah, yeah. I, I won't lie. I'd be the exact same way if a bunch of people tied me up 
and then I would just, <laughs> yeah, like, I wouldn't I fucking leave my right? house, dude. I'd be like, man, it's either I just sit inside my house for the rest of my life, or I just go on a rampage. <laughs> Can you imagine the conversation you have with your parents? So, like, son, why don't you want to leave? Because I got tied up at the fence, and they call oh, me Olympic. I can't there, go out there anymore, Dad. There, there is absolutely no oh, chance of them ever having that conversation. I'm, no. I'm pretty sure there was nothing said because that seems to be a very big problem in Japan, where like nothing's actually getting no, no one like, talks about the problems like, in Japan. Yeah, that's yeah. Yep. yeah. You just internalize it that's all. That's why suicide rates yep. high brutal mm, yeah, I, yeah i was actually kind of disappointed that we actually saw what he looked like in real life now basically he's like this kid <laughs> the and mystery I can't is like get away. Image. i can't get his oh. image out of my head now i was like man this little kid like it just like basically just looks adorable and then he's just like the fucking middle-aged <laughs> man just jerking off. Like, again yeah <laughs> <laughs> That's right, and if he looked good, he wouldn't be in this predicament in the first place, all right? He would be called Olympic. There's a reason why he was picked on, all right? Not even yeah. that part. Not even that part. Like, it's basically just him laying in bed, just jerking it. I'm like, really? Did we have to get this image of this man? Again, again, it's critical. Again, critical. This plot the, element. The, 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 self, the self-insert, man. That's why it creates the trope <laughs> again, of reincarnation. Hey, I'm not watching this to watch myself. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that's what I, knew, that's what I, I knew it, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. That's what I wrote people are watching it for. <laughs> Yikes. Yeah. Oh my god. Um, anyway, uh, guys, I got a little bit. It's uh, all the, <laughs> all the edginess and you know, <laughs> cutting focus aside. I, I really enjoyed this episode with you know, getting to learn more about Roxy, dude. As same. well as kind of where he comes, her you know, demon kind of heritage, and mm-hmm. even furthermore, when he's telling uh, Rudy as a Rudy about the mage school mm-hmm. where he's kind of you know, pushing him towards going there as like his next oh, step, so. Yeah. Yeah, I was actually very. I actually hope we see more of Roxy. Roxy's awesome. Definitely. Roxy, I, I was. I was dying I, Roxy, when they were. <laughs> or go ahead. I was gonna say, like, no, was she's she's definitely coming back. Like when she, when she says like, "Oh, tell me that when you're older." When they do that time skip, she's definitely yeah. coming back, and he's, she's definitely mm-hmm. being part of the harem. That's just again, it's this is the show that created that trope. So yeah. yeah. Wait, like, I actually kind of like pause for a second. Like, oh, you're gonna tell me that when you're like ten, like uh, ten years later, and then and then you he's, find like a little bit later, he's four years old. I was like. I have one really big problem is just that I need to get over it's just like in the world once you're at 15 you're an adult I'm like eh, it's kind of weird well I mean it's me- fantasy medieval, slash medieval like fantasy so times yeah that's what I'm saying but it's just it's you know just like weird. you know like high school didn't start like 100 years ago so most people at 15 were either working at a job or like Work, yeah I don't mm-hmm. know I'm like, just hoping that you know Roxy's main girl even though, yeah, I, I would say for me though, this episode, uh, Car- Carvaggio, the horse, he stole the show for me. Oh my god, <laughs> that's my guy right there. Like, when this, when this shit first that's one <laughs> tough looking horse. <laughs> Dude, when he got hit by the lightning, I was like, Dude, oh, he's not. Like, he's just dead. Like, I mean, that just fits Roxy's, you know, quirkiness so well. <laughs> you know, when she's panicking, like, what do I do? What do I do? And he's like, heal magic, heal magic. <laughs> Dude, OP man, we can bring things back to the brink of death, and then even the horse is like, "Man, fuck these people." Yeah, dude, he was just like downtrodden, and just like, "Oh my god," oh, it's like, <laughs> but with this shit, it's way too much. Yeah. Maybe if I don't move, they won't know I'm here. Yeah, <laughs> just plays dead after being brought back. Yeah, yeah. Like, dude, oh, like, come on, animation still top notch. Like, yep. the, 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 the animation when they flash back to the modern day, like that animation looks really good. Like, what mm-hmm. the heck? Yeah, dude, that animation of Limdig was. Spot on. Like, oh, yeah. that's, that's, it, that's the oh, uncensored cut. I, I missed that cut. <laughs> like for some reason, like the modern day stuff looks really good, and I guess like, like they're going more of like the classical look for like the fancy part. But it's just it's. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad. It's a bad thing, but like it's it's what well, I know. Right, it's like it. the modern days. This looks really good. Yeah. Yeah. The, the point I actually thought like for like how good it looked was just you know during the whole animation when he learned sacred ma- magic already. Mm-hmm. Like I thought like that whole kind of process looked really nice. Yeah. It's kind of on the similar vibes of like Konosuba, where they just go over the top Explosion. with the magic focus. Yep, yeah. exactly. Dude, this guy's the already base even... in these explosions are just too real, dude. Mm. <laughs> Hook that up to some subs and you just blow out all the windows. Yeah, it was pretty sick when he did like what the like the fire and water thing like in the sky, and then it was just like kind of like that whole like boom, sonic mm-hmm. boom deal that happened. I thought that oh, was yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty good. Dude, yeah, so. I'm actually I'm really liking the show yeah. so far. Even um, with like the like the little etchiness at the beginning, where I, I laugh. Yeah. So, um, so I think they either got times. I think they're done being a little kid. They either got like, times either being ten or maybe twelve to learn some mm-hmm. more skills, or they might just go straight to high school. That's how these. That's how these isekais usually go, and this is the original. So we'll see if it, if it uh, go that route. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. It might time skip like another like two three years, and then he has like a sibling. Oh yeah, 
Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. What if he gets that baby sister of his, right? Oh, ready? It's been like a two year gap. How does he not have a sibling yet? Are you yeah, kidding dude, me? My mom, they're just banging, the, the like, banging oh, like bunnies dude, out there. They're bro. going at it every night. Are you kidding me? Come on, man. Step it up. Hey, maybe yeah. uh, maybe he knows how to. He has a strong pullout game, you know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's, like, it's not working with much contraceptive back then. Yeah. So. yeah, you know well, what I'm saying. It's, it's MC may want a sister, fancy, so you just say magic. <laughs> like MC uh, might want a sister, but the, but the the dad does not. It's always magic. Yeah. I did. I did like though at the very end how they had to just you know remind us of the etchiness with uh the maid finding Annie. Roxy's panties. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Just in case we forgot, you know. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I with I it, ended about with that. it. Yeah, it's like that's fine. Right. It's basically like a flash gone. Done. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, th- so wait, how old? So, so you guys think there's gonna be actually like another time skip then? I think I mean, so. There has I don't to know. Be. They ended it with his me. fifth birthday celebration, and now it's like it just makes sense. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Like I feel like yeah, everything that's... as a little kid. It's it's a little too, I don't know, too OP. Even though he already is OP. So. Yeah, I'm I'm kind of sad though because uh, I mean I'm hoping the show continues, but. Uh, it's currently down for only 11 episodes as well. I thought it was Tom 23. Really? I'm pretty sure uh, they mentioned 23. Is it, is it two parts then? Is it going to be two parts? There, there might be two pretty parts. Pretty sure it's 23 okay. episodes is what the Blu-ray okay, listed. So, so the first half then is going to it shows as 11 right now. Unless yeah. that's, yeah, uh, unless yeah. that's Tizzle wrong. Yeah, says split core. So yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 23. Damn it, so we have to wait? Okay. Okay. I don't know. Split cores are really popular. I guess I guess it's no. better on the anime teams. So they don't, you know, kill themselves oh, with the yeah, production. <sighs> I'd rather have them living than basically. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, yeah. that's a trade off. Yeah, it, it's fair. We don't want a CD project, Red. <laughs> I mean, exactly. <laughs> Japan can always, I mean, you know, hey, Japan improve does on their that working too, conditions. So I mean, it's not surprising. Yeah, it's nothing new, right? So. Yeah. But they could always improve their working conditions. You know? Ah, that's funny. Have, uh, I know, right? It's, you know, it's Japan hard to... improve their working condition. <laughs> the yeah, fact is, well. they already showed that they could do it with working conditions like that. So why change, right? Yes, that's fair. No, From the big business oh, corporate yeah. viewpoint, yep. Yeah. Yep. Some bullshit. Well, it's not even that. It's because like anime studios are are treated as contractors, so they don't even get like a split of any profits. They just like mm, true. get paid initial sum just to pay off what who are the wages, and then the people working on don't get that money because it's not it's not royalties. It's just like contract money. You mm-hmm. guys, this is getting depressing. What? This reminds me yeah. too much of like normal life. Like it is. Yeah. <laughs> we have to go back to our isekais guy. Uh, yeah, oh, that's why we have isekais. So, so back to the banging, right? Back yeah. to Olympic, right? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. That, that is some crazy Head. shit, dude. Yeah. 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 So I don't have anything to say. Otherwise, besides that, I'm looking forward to the show. So I'm enjoying yeah. more than I thought I would. You know, like I was worried about like the isekai tropes, but mm. I think. It's yeah, how very doing solid. It program, if it wasn't yeah. for the fact that like it was the original one, like I think I would, I think I would have enjoyed it way more. But because I'm so familiar with all these tropes, like I, I honestly, like, it, it less it kind of lessens it for me. But I still enjoy the show. I'm still actually really enjoy- like just like like how they're like like how they're doing the time skipping. Perfectly fine. Don't have anything against it. Um, just like how he's also like uh like not like leveling up, but just like his like experiences or just like how he's going through training. Perfectly fine with it. Um, even though I'm, I'm, even though he's like already at sacred magic, I'm sure there's a lot of magic like we haven't seen yet that he's actually learned. That oh I'm yeah, sure will be kind of like sprinkled yeah. here. And there. I mean, he's already strong that he can't. He doesn't have to like chant the spells. So that's oh, all right. Yeah. That's all right. Huge advantage. Which I feel really bad for Roxy because I'm, I'm pretty sure she's like tra- trained her like entire life and she still she's can't a do ch- it. She's a child prodigy and she still can't handle yeah. this kid. How, how old is she? Like, she's, do we know? She said middle school. Or, uh, Rudy she's said demon, she, she looks like middle school age so we'll see mm-hmm. I'm, I'm I don't know being a demon age, or whatever my to to it. It. yeah so okay, I, I, can't I assume like middle school. i assume like 12 13 maybe but even maybe for a demon though like demon demon i don't know how demon, demon but yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't so even know if they'll focus in on that but yeah, yeah. Gotcha. She'll, she'll outlive root uh uh rudy yes, for sure or rudy for sure so <laughs> oh yeah we're a demon you're already gonna be living it longer than everybody else yep yeah yep okay yeah all right, so yeah, that's that's it Pop for Wishoku Tensei. Um, I think we can go next to uh, Kimo Jihen. You guys want to talk about that for a little bit? Uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Is it just me, and Justin? Right? And Taylor, I think. Uh, uh, Taylor, did you watch? Here, I believe. Taylor, uh, you're muted. If uh, having technical difficulties. Sorry, but... I'm everything over. No problem. No worries. Uh, so did you watch uh, Kimo yes, Jihen? I watched it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh. Yeah, so actually, I'm actually liking like how it's picking up. I'm enjoying the characters. Uh, I totally got debated. I thought that one ice chick was a dude or a chick. 
Mm-hmm. Turns out it's a dude. Mm-hmm. Uh, really weird, but you know, I'm who am I to judge, right? It's, it's Felix weird. Part Two, like from Ray Zero. Felix was a. Anyways, never mind. Don't worry about it. Oh man, that, that was I'm not gonna lie. That went over my head a little. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. I'm like, hmm. I, it's just but, the first thing that I thought of, where it was like, why? What's even the point? Because there's that character in ReZero, Felix, who looks and acts and. Oh frozen. right, right. The the cat, the cat looking girl, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. boy, and so like that's the same thing in this one. I just don't really understand like why they make those characters like. But I mean, it's fine. Yeah. Um, to debate think- guys like me, I guess. <laughs> I actually kind of feel like I'm moving a further away from this show. Like I, I think yeah. that I was looking for something that was more period like uh, and now that they're in Tokyo and it's more modern times and I, I don't know. Something about mm-hmm. it just isn't quite hitting right for me. Yeah. I, I think if anything, it's like we said on last week's podcast where the characters are really gonna have to come through and shine. Mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. you know the the two characters that we got introduced to this episode were um bad by any means. Like we definitely don't know a lot about Akira, the girl who is a guy uh but i think shiki the other guy who's kind of a sundere who has the spider abilities yeah. um mm-hmm. i kind of i enjoyed him in this yeah. episode of just his standoff mm-hmm. with kabane and mm-hmm. everything i think the thing that i'm worried about is, is what i said last week as well where um i'm worried that kabane is going to be a bit too op because you know as we see later in the app oh. when they're kind of covering their first case he just kind of waltz right in and just ignores like Wait, everything it? yeah mm-hmm. like what did he do he just lifted the Nothing. he just lifted he just, yeah, he just listened to the detective character and is like all right cool like like that was you know? really weird yeah so hopefully they try to tone that down a little bit and we get to see you know more of the balance of the other characters abilities well um, and also like as you were saying about like for the characters and how they need to show more development our mc has like no per or feelings that we've seen not yeah. really the super monotone. But I mean, mm-hmm. at the end, we do see, you know, now that he really does want to strive to meet his parents and everything, and that emotion is starting to come out. So mm-hmm. hopefully it grows. But yeah, this episode is just completely like, you know, logical, few word answers and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So um, we'll see. I'm, I'll definitely, you know, watch the probably next two episodes and make a decision whether or not I'll stay with it. But right. yeah. um, I know they like, tried. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Well, oh, sorry. I was just going to say, honestly, there's nothing wrong with this show. Like, if you hadn't seen something like this before, you'd probably really like it. Like, there's really nothing wrong with it. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't stand out. There's nothing too special, exactly. Um, I think they tried to allude to it in the end when the uh, detective Unagami, uh, whatever his name is, is Mm -hmm. on the phone with the woman and is like, oh, you know, this Kabane, he has, you know, a spirit stone. And they're like, oh. Do we need to be worried about that? Or is that going to like be good for our cause? So they dropped the, the subtle breadcrumb yet again at the end of the episode. But it's, it's definitely not enough to be like, OK, is this really going to change the mediocrity of kind of what we see right now? I don't Needs know, to do something special. but I'm liking the, uh, the character design from what I'm seeing in the opening. Mm-hmm. I'm getting That's that out of auto vibe from her. So uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see. What's happening for red chick, uh, red hair chicks? So we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Agreed. I, I feel like I completely missed whatever whatever you're talking about. Oh, uh, you'll see it next week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they're going to uh, introduce a new character. I thought it was going to be the uh, the the shut in IT guy or like uh, smart guy, but I guess it's going to be the the female character that was in the opening that they're going to introduce next week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that pretty much covers everything other than they just kind of covered, you know, more terminology of the detective agency play on words with exorcist, but kimonoist, so beast slayers. Um, and then also the phrase, I think, Hanyo, which I don't know if they talked about that in episode one, but just what people are called that are half demon, half demon. Oh, yeah. mm-hmm. So, yep, just continuing to build the world out a little bit more. The two things that I liked about this episode that stood out to me, just for me personally, were um, like the 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 monster that they had to fight this week, which was those bugs. Those were pretty disgusting. I mean, like I don't know, like legitimately, like when those things were crawling on top of his eyeball, like I I couldn't, I had to look away. Like I couldn't do that. Those things were like some extreme bed bugs. (laughs) Oh my god! So I mean, like it's not original, but it's still effective. Like it definitely creeped me out. And then um, I also really like the relationship between the detective and the kids he's taken in because that can be like, I don't know, especially in anime for me, like sometimes that kind of a relationship can be 
odd or not carried off very well for various reasons. But I really like how he basically treats them like adults almost. And um, like you can see that he cares for them kind of like their kids, but he speaks to them and, and treats them like adults. And I think and I just really like their relationship from what little we've seen so far. Yeah, um, those are the two things that stood out for me. For this uh, Honestly, I still don't know if we can trust him just with the ending. I don't know if they're just trying to yeah. do like an easy bait where now they want the audience to all think he's evil and has some, you know, like underhanded plot. Right. Play, I don't think he's evil. I really don't. Yeah. It could be a double reverse where that person that he's yeah. talking to could not even, they might be good as well for all we know, but. Or maybe it, it could even just be a thing where it's like he has an ulterior motive, but it's not necessarily something that works against them. It's just not mm-hmm. something that's bearing. It, it's too early, I think, to tell. Agreed. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. We'll see. That's it. All right. So that's a bit for Kimo Jihen for this week. And then uh, move, I guess, quickly to Hori Mia. Um, I just only have one little thing. I just, I just want to get out like that first half where, like, um, where the student council president and his girlfriend basically like made like Hori look bad in front of everyone, and she's like on the verge of crying because like she was gonna get blamed for something that like they, she wasn't her fault, whatever. Like, I don't know. That really, that really bothered me and pissed me off. And they just played off like it was nothing. Just because like they're childhood friends, they made it sound like it's some sort of comedy thing. But I, don't know, I was really pissed at that. Like if that, like if I was in her position, I like I'd beat the shit out of that guy. Like, I'd be so pissed that like you almost set me up for this, dude. Like, yeah. And that's what Miyamura did, bro. He went up to him, headbutted the guy. Yeah, him, I love that. And now he's internally like afraid of Miyamura now. Yeah. Like so I, think, I think it was fine. I think it was. Fine. I, don't know. I I guess like the, the end end result was fine but just that moment just really pissed me off like yeah i i think if anything it kind of showed that like hori's character development is really weak because even if you think about you know when they showed the past of her like bullying who is now the student council uh, president um there was no reason for her to like change or feel like this massive in debt because he was literally just like hey when i get to when we get to high school don't bother me like leave me alone he's like the whole the whole like like, yeah a, a wuss the whole part it just it felt so off to me like so that's why I, yeah. that's why I didn't that's why this this first half bothered me like i just didn't understand part that part and that's why like the whole like intervention thing really pissed me off yeah i i definitely didn't care for any of that focus in this episode i think if anything it was the beginning when they're focusing on hori learning what mia's full name is and and hori's mom stole the show for me this episode <laughs> it's always yeah. it's always she's, the mill she's awesome as, yep. yeah. as <laughs> cool what i don't know if you would say but like as it's his favorite so <laughs> got that good out of vibes man just saying <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah i don't know this is like the the thing that i always this this is why i end up not watching slice of life or um uh, like romance drama anime a lot is because i feel like there's so much contrived drama if i was gonna watch contrived drama i would go to my like taiwanese dramas and watch those instead mm. and so like the like there's so many different levels for what annoyed me in this episode (laughs) and you guys already touched on all of them the fact that like i don't really understand why hori bullied that guy when they were growing up um i don't really i I actually can see why she would feel indebted to him because for me i would feel really guilty about it later on so that made sense to me but they like left it till the end of the episode like it's like a big reveal which just Mm -hmm. felt stupid to me (laughs) um and then like there's like kids talking and whispering to each other in the hallway about this shit like who cares like even if she let's say everything happened exactly like what the student council president was saying had happened which is that she just didn't do the budget i guess then like who cares? She can just do it again really quick. It didn't even take that long. She still left mm-hmm. while it was light outside. Like, it just feels like really contrived drama to me. And mm-hmm. I just am not here for that. I don't care. And the only part of this episode that was good was exactly what I think who said it? Or maybe you, Justin? I'm not sure. Um, the whole scene with like the mom and like figuring out the names. That was adorable. And they should lean way more into that aspect and not this fake drama. Mm-hmm. Well, I think I the mean, oh, I go I mean, well, to be fair, with all the other, I mean, I've never actually, I have, but I'm not really sure what the the culture is like in in Japanese schools. But I feel like that's pretty normal in Japan, right? Like, I, a yeah, I agree with everything. who, like, if, um, you, if you messed up, they want you to apologize. Yeah, but I mean, like, some, she some stood there Japanese and said to him, "I did it." You know right. what I mean? And he just like stood there and he's like, "No, you didn't." Right. It, it just felt 
it still felt forced. Just the entire situation felt forced to me. So even if kids would still think, oh, well, she messed up. If she'd actually messed up, then sure, you could whisper about it. But she'd said she hadn't. And then they just stood there in the hallway for effect, I guess. I don't know. It of, felt awkward and staged. If anything, Sengoku gives me... Um, oh, man. The vibes from Origairu in the second season or third season when they have like the collaborative meeting with the other pseudo council <laughs> guy. That He's guy. just like super pompous, acting like he know, and he throws all these like business jargon terms out and everything. That's exactly who Sengoku reminds me of. He's like just this guy who's like he has the title and name and everything, mm -hmm. but he realistically doesn't do anything. Like that's why, like, oh, well, I don't know. It's just, just the whole like the the whole vibe of him just was really weird. They made it sound like he was just a total asshole for the audience and, and then just like turns out he's just this this wimp that was bullied by yeah. hori it's, it's it just felt weird yeah, yeah. But to me it makes i'm not going to justify it but to me like the 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 events that occurred like it made sense to me like why they did it how they did it you know mm -hmm. uh but like for me i feel like it makes up for it with how they ended that that conflict that they had because it just totally made me root for like uh mia and like hori being together Mm -hmm. And just the fact that Mia's such a stand-up guy, he's pretty cool. He's willing to stand up for his girl. Like that's what makes me respect the character cute. quite a bit. Was that? He's super cute. Uh, sure. Yep. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I think it makes this character stand out a lot more for me, and that's what I really liked about that portion of, of this show or this mm -hmm. episode. So. Yeah. Agreed. So, I think um, I like the only like like downside like. I had for the show. Hopefully, that's like the only I have to complain about. I, I, I don't know. I'm not gonna think much too much about it. I'm still gonna enjoy as like a weekly thing. I don't expect much huge plot to happen during. The Do show. we? Did they uh, ever say like what year Hori and Mia are all in? Because oh, oh, I know uh, at the they're, end, they're, gonna they're gonna be thirty, 30 years. They're gonna be thirty years soon. That's what they said at the end okay. of this episode. Yeah. yeah. So I remembered that. I just couldn't remember if they were already second years or they, they didn't started. Say, out but years. now that he said it, you just have to assume they are. Yeah, okay. Yeah, time like, is going very quickly in this anime. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if time oh, passed by that quickly, reminds me. or if they just like started off the like, second year like, really yeah. late. The other thing I didn't really like is when um they just had the scene for Hori's birthday, and then Hori's just like, oh yeah, I completely forgot it was my birthday. And it's like, how... I just didn't really see the connection of like, how do you forget your birthday? And then they were trying to like make it all meaningful of like, oh, wow, it's already that time of the year. Uh, that, I think it's know, because spring break no, is I, ending. I, I forget sometimes. It's I don't because, want to know what it's I think it's birthday. because like, <laughs> because you know, in Japan, like their, their school year starts in April. So that mm -hmm. spring break they have is, be is between the last year and the first and the next year of their school year. So right. I think it's supposed okay. to signify like the tr transition to being next year up plus it's their last year in school i think that's like the main importance yeah i so, like it's giving more meaning to when the little brother was just like oh how long is mia gonna be you know coming and staying with it. us at the house yeah. Yeah. yeah that part and also i think it's because she's probably always busy taking her brother like even during like spring break when their mm, birthday should be true. I, think, I think that maybe that's why she doesn't remember she doesn't true. celebrate much because she's just taking her care of her brother while they're both on spring break mm-hmm mm. Yeah, okay. plus being old it just sucks in general. Who wants? That's to true. Yeah, you want you want to start remembering it. Oh god. Um, I don't know. But yeah, that, I mean, but... uh, yeah, you'll 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 understand. We get older, David. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I think I think like David was right. Like it's only to signify that you know it's not that much longer until like their school life ends, and mm -hmm. you know Mia might not be around anymore. Which like, do you yes. think we're gonna get to see their life after high school with the pace that they're going I, at? I don't know. We're yeah. only two apps in, and they're gonna third year. Yeah, like, I don't know. I don't I know. Think, I'm so. gonna drag it out. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. Usually you start. Usually, usually you like start like in the first long. year, so you can go all through high school. But they're exactly. going to like third year, so mm -hmm. it just depends on the uh, pacing. Yeah, maybe maybe at the real last episode they'll do like an epilogue of what happens after school. That's, that's but I think the manga is still going. So I, I oh seriously, yeah, I'm pretty sure wow. it's still going. I see the cover like on manga sites all the time. So like I, oh. I, I, I thought yeah. it was still ongoing. Oh yeah, who knows? Maybe, maybe we'll get a yep, season. It's two. ongoing. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I guess we're getting so. season two. Just, Justin, if you just looked it up, do you see how many chapters are out right now? Uh, there's 15 volumes. 15 volumes. It's a monthly okay. manga, isn't it? Or is it weekly? I think it's monthly. Uh, but... It would yeah, probably be monthly, right? That's what I would think with that, because it started in 2011. Okay. So. Like, just really? kind yeah. of the way the pacing goes, it feels like a monthly manga. So, Do we know mm -hmm. how long this season is going to be? I think it only announced 12. 11 episodes or 12? Yeah. 13 episodes. 13, okay. okay. 
So we're really just going to scratch the surface. Because like, this, like shows like this, like rom coms or like like High School Life, they don't usually get like two uh, two season two like splits like or two cores right away. So usually you right. assume just it's, one. Uh, it's monthly release. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, unless it blows up like Kaguya on the but I think I think isn't Kaguya? Kaguya is, was amazing from think, episode isn't that one weekly, though. though. Well, I don't know, but I'm saying like unless it blows up, I don't see how this genre is going to get. I don't like, think it's it's that. Too. I don't think it's that popular. I think it's just like it's popular within the genre, but I think Kaguya was just popular overall, so I don't think it's in mm-hmm. the same league. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but uh, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so even though I ranted a lot about whatever happened and stuff, so I'm still looking forward to it. Future episodes, so. Same. Yeah. So that'll be it for yes, for Hori Mia for this week, and then um, next up, uh, we just want let's see, uh, you want to talk about um, I'm a spider, so what for a little bit? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, you can start. Uh-huh. Sure. Okay. Um. So this episode we focused on um, a little more growth of both Kumiko, the spider character, as well as her other classroom counterparts. Um, I think for me, uh, I really enjoyed seeing more and more Kumika's growth of leveling up her abilities. Um, she ran into uh, a different variety of enemies this time. So there's a little bit of uh, uniqueness in terms of how she kind of you know came across those obstacles and stuff. Mm. Um, and I think the pacing that they're leveling up Kumiko, so to speak, uh, I'm glad to see because I was worried it was going to be something that may have been not fast enough to really kind of get to the point where we bring together a lot of the other characters that we see in the opening. So. Right. Yeah, no, I think the pacing is pretty damn good uh, for for what it is. It's kind mm-hmm. of a, a gag Isekai anime. Uh, so I'm kind of surprised it's actually pretty in-depth as uh, like character growth and whatnot. And uh, they do introduce like kind of the, the bully too that uh, bullied her when she was in high school and how mm-hmm. they're kind of showing like oh maybe this is my uh, like punishment yeah, for what punish- she did to her when they were in the human world right uh, so I thought that was pretty interesting and then uh, it looks like they're alluding to the fact that uh, there's evolution now since they're creatures so it's kind of interesting to see like how Kumiko is going to like evolve maybe she'll have some kind of like humanoid spider form as well uh, but they are alluding that uh, since uh, the bully is an earth dragon, she's going to evolve as well. Maybe she'll grow up to be like a dragonoid type uh, human creature as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think the other thing that was good to see was kind of how they were tying together the relation of where Kumiko is and then where the school is mm-hmm. and how they were, they, you know, they had the scene in class where they were talking about like, oh, I heard, you know, an earth dragon nest was discovered. And that specifically yeah. relates to when Kumiko comes across the the earthworm egg that she learns from her appraisal mm-hmm. ability or whatever that identifies things. Um, so I'm glad they tied that in and that, you know, the location between these two different groups mm-hmm. is really close. It's not something like they're on, you know, different parts of the world that's like, OK, how the heck are they ever going to, you know, cross lines? Right, and then based on the uh, like the events or the, the events that is occurring in the show right now, I wonder if, uh, like Kumiko's events is happening before, uh, like in the past of the of the, oh. of the kids, right? Because like, uh, you know, she's I didn't an think dragon. about it that way. Yeah, yeah. She, she's an earthly dragon, and in Kumiko's uh, story, like there was an earthworm egg, right? Yeah, so we don't know. If that's the earthworm oh. that grew up. In that's a big brain story. take right there. I like right. that. Or if it was actually the girl herself that yep. came up meeting. And like later uh, in the future, those humans was able to retrieve it and brought it back to civilization, you know? So I like yeah. that theory. I like that. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's really weird how at first they're having like two different stories playing out at once, but it looks like it might be like a time lapse sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And eventually they'll just tie it all together. So I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll keep watching it. I think it's, you know, shown good things for the most part in a season that's, you know, very heavy with Isekai's. Right. Um, but it's definitely showing that it uh is definitely worth checking out. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Uh yeah, that's that's all I had for this uh this week. Same. All right. So yeah, that'll be it for I'm a spider, so what? And then we'll uh we'll move on to a new show that aired this week, uh Wonder Egg Priority. I have no idea what this oh, show is about, man. but I'm, I'm curious. This so. show this just show. oozes style and just it's nice. It's it's some good eye candy. The story, uh, it's out there. 
So we'll see how they tie that all in. But uh, Sret and Taylor, I'll let you guys kind of chime in and give Dude, your thoughts the, first. The story, I actually want to know more. Like, just like, because I, like, going into this, I didn't really know what to expect. Just from the trailers, it made it look like it was just like a normal kind of casual slice of life show. And then, <laughs> like, the shit that all of a sudden was happening, I was just like, wait, what, like, what is actually going on? Like, it's, it was nothing that I would have expected at all. But it's like, mm-hmm. I think with the animation, it, it makes it look really nice. And also just like, it made me kind of like at least like pay way more attention to like kind of like what like of, at least of what what we know of the story where it just seems like sh- where she that it's almost like she has to take like mich- missions in a sense in the dream worlds where they're actually like real for others mm-hmm. where it's actually like re- real worlds or it's like real world um it's like a real world to them but then she's just kind of like there to either like protect them or com- basically just complete missions, make sure they're alive. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of like what I got. Yeah, it seemed kind of similar to like the concept of like the Matrix, you know, like you oh, really yeah. just read in a way, you know, you have these different worlds where in some worlds you have this omnipotent beings, but they still kind of suffer in, in some regards. You know, they're never really immortal in, in any sense. Um, I think this show's gonna be really heavy in terms. It's gonna try to pull on some heartstrings. Yeah, you know, yeah. why <laughs> Oto Ai is the way she is. Besides just to back, her, yeah. Just to back up a little bit, it seems like this show it introduces a character who's basically being bullied, and it seems like those are gonna be the themes that this show is mainly tackling. Might go into well, some other stuff, but that's what they well, really. Focus well, it, on. it ties even further into you know not just I being bullied, but even the it, the girl who befriended her, she well, getting a, a result of. Mm-hmm. Well, so, I mean, they allude to that she commits, you know, suicide, and that's the whole reason that she's kind of entering into these missions from this, like, alien-esque being that says, you know, hey, we can bring back people if you, you know, save enough other people, in a sense, so. Yeah, um, because it was like, like, I still don't get, like, why it's in, it's in an egg form. <laughs> like, why these missions are eggs, and where she has to, like, go down the, don't question the it. hole. Yeah, yeah, that, that's fair. That's fair. I, should I mean, you have you have Tamago Market as well. I think Japan just likes you know oh, yes. the play on eggs and all those things. And she's media. talking to she's talking to some being that takes the form of another bug, like uh like in Re Zero, mm-hmm. which well I'm I'm sure that just happens like it just seems like whatever the voice is, it's just basically kind of like whatever it wants to be. It just tends to be a bug so far. Yeah, so I mean, we we definitely got a good amount of information of just, you know, setting the the background of the primary characters and just this, you know, otherworldly adventure they're going to be embarking on. Um, I think, again, with like, you know, all shows, it's really just continuing to see now the other characters that are, you know, separate from I that are kind of doing the same missions to save yeah. somebody else that maybe they've lost. It, it definitely also seems like she's like a newbie in it. Like she's still kind of like just understanding it because, uh, at the, at the beginning, like when she was like first, like when they were being chased by those one things, you know, she was running with them, and then where it just feels like where she was almost like immortal in a sense in these worlds, mm-hmm. where because uh, she's not actually affected, they really pay no attention to her, but yet she can still affect the world. Yeah, which is a uh, it, it's also kind of like how that's gonna play uh, play out. But it also seemed like at the end of like you know the first dream that she was a part of. With that one just creepy ass looking chick with the the crazy like the crazy looking like oh like the blurred face. mixed like face yeah, yeah yeah and then where she was able to you know take her out but then at the same time it seemed like she recognized her like all of a sudden it's uh, like where she, she was like a part of the world mm-hmm. which also like they kind of like mentioned like how it's like oh that like that was an easy one where I I assume at some point like uh like the world will like she'll kind of be affected by the world or she'll be recognized at least mm-hmm. by these dream worlds at some point. So it's actually, I, I, I actually really want to see like how they build up on that. Yeah, it, it kind of gives me vibes of there's an anime movie called Paprika, which is very, that's, that's very similar. Very much give me those vibes, yes. So we'll see. Um, I think overall, lots of potential, as we said. Really beautiful show in terms of the animation being worked into it. Cloverworks is putting a lot of shows on its back this season. <laughs> yeah, I don't man. know how they're, they're making, doing it. Pray. They're, ma- they're <laughs> making that sword art and fake grain order money to get use. Uh, right? I mean, just pray for the animators that I they're mean, getting treated well. They're, they're under the same company as Ufotable, so... Yeah, so they're probably doing better right. than, than the rest. Yeah, so. I think this will be like the dark horse of or like dark horse show of the season. Like it's, That's it's what I hear like a lot of people say. A lot of potential. Yeah, mm-hmm. especially because it's original mm-hmm. too. Oh, I yeah, have no idea. 
And the fact that I, uh, I'm just looking at like genres and stuff, like obviously we've got, you know, like the psychological fantasy vibe. And I, I, I think a lot of times we don't get too many dark shows as maybe we used to. So I think this is a show that's really going to kind of dive into the, the idea of like, not just bullying, because I think that's something that we see in a lot of other shows and just kind of with the reference back to what occurs regularly in Japanese culture at an adolescent age. But I think we're going to see a lot of other concepts come into play with just like humanity, reality, all these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm good. I'm sure we'll have more. Good first step. Yeah, we'll have more to talk about when we actually understand like what's going on in the show. <laughs> right? <before. laughs> exactly. All we know, we got eggs, and eggs save people. I wonder. <laughs> so eat your eggs. Yes. All right. So that's it for our Wonder Egg priority. And then um, just we'll leave this space for any shout outs that you want to give to. I know, Australia, you're still watching Euro Camp we, and Nine Beery. Yeah. Do you, you want to do Never, uh, Promise Neverland first? Uh, do you want. Oh, just kidding. No, no, no. Okay, never mind. Do you no. want to do that at the end oh. here? Or do you want me to end the stream, Strain? Or do you want to do it at the end? And then it's your call. Uh, sure, we'll do the, we'll the shout-outs at the end real quick then. And then we'll do Promise Neverland. Okay. Yes, Eurocamp is still Eurocamp. It's still Nan- just... Nanyan uh, Buri. Nanyan Buri is also yep. another show. Basically, the, like very casual, very relaxing. Where you just kind of can oh, put uh, how's, in the mood. How is Skate? Are you still enjoying it? Uh, I mean, it's... Yeah, no, it's so fine. Like, there's really nothing to talk about too okay. much. It's just like yeah. basically Shout some out guy to from skate, Canada. Then. Yeah, so it's escape for staying pretty and bros yeah. being bros. All right. Yep. Um, <laughs> any other shows you want to shout out? Actually, uh, cool. Yes. Do you, you said you you watched Bottom Tier. You still think you're gonna stick with that? Yeah, I actually like Bottom Tier. Uh, okay. I feel like it's not for everyone, but it, I do appreciate what they're trying to go for with their uh, messages, or I guess if you're trying to help out uh neats or whoever try to break out of their shell and be more social uh i can kind of appreciate it because they do go through some things that are actually somewhat reasonable and you can actually apply it to your life if you need it um so i, I think it's pretty nice okay because i was i did, uh, i was gonna watch that this week but i didn't get to it but i think i'll stick with it and yeah i i just think like it's serving a purpose for the people who need it so there's some people right. need to like hear this could, message like it comes out fairly natural. It doesn't feel forced. Uh, so I definitely think it's a, it's a decent show. Uh, so I would definitely watch it. And then the two other shows that I'm watching that it's not for everyone, right? Uh, but Hidden Dungeon that only I can enter and <laughs> yes. uh, Redo of Healer. Oh, my, okay. Uh, yes, the two so redo, itchy shows. Re- yeah, so <laughs> they're, they are pretty itchy, but if you can kind of get past that, it's kind of like Mishoko Tensei. Uh, if you can get past that, it's not too bad, uh, although you do kind of need to have certain tastes for it. Uh, redo of healer uh, has a dark MC, um, but it's basically just like any other uh, fantasy itchy shows. And apparently, it's from the makers of High School DxD. So if you like the artwork <laughs> from that, you might like this show. Wait, it's uh, the author. I knew or, something or looked studio? familiar. <laughs> well, I, I have no idea. That's, okay, that's just what I hear. And then uh, as for Hidden Dungeon Only, I can enter. Uh, it has a pretty interesting concept, but again, it's very etchy. Um, but if you can kind of get past that, I think it's worth giving it a shot. See if you like. There's it. a lot of show this season, so I don't know. There is. Oh, there real, is. real quick, I had one more shout out for uh, Skate. Uh, this is more kind of directed to Ku, uh, dude. Uh, are you, you're watching it, right, Ku? Yep. Skate, dude. Canada's mom. Oh. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> dude, that's yeah. I completely forgot. I was like, wait, where where did I see that? I was like, oh, that's right. That was Skate. But yeah, dude, ten out of ten. That's all. Add her to the list. <laughs> yeah, very odd. The real one. Yes, yeah, I gotta say. she's uh, she's very. Like, that was the first thing when I saw her. I was like, wait, like I immediately said, like, all right, I gotta talk to Koo about this. <laughs> so, I, um, hmm, I could be the next Oliver or whoever. Uh, yes, Oscar. But yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. All right. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. That was the shot that I had. Okay. <laughs> and then Stratton, show me to end it, and then go me in the stream, and then go up, promise something. You want to do the whole. Being one stream, yeah. we can end. Okay, so we're ending here. Um, shout out to the audience for being with us this week. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy, always enjoy hanging out with you guys. Thanks for my panel being with me. Really enjoyed talking this week. Felt like a lot of interesting things happened, even though it's only second week or like the first week for a last show. So, mm, thanks, guys. Definitely. Yeah, no worries. And Thank then, you. a lot of shows are watching this season too. So, it's this. Season probably a longer podcast than usual, but that's fine. We we gotta try to split up a bunch of shows, at least the popular ones, so that you don't have to just go through the timestamps for this. So, but that'll be it for this week. We'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.
Bye. Bye. Well, I think everybody's back. Ku doesn't watch Promise. Oh, he doesn't? Okay. No. Oh, wow. Ku. I think I knew that, but I'm just still disappointed. I, I Every I, week I, it's I, a shock. I forgot, yeah. Okay. <laughs> you watch a show called In Dungeon, but you won't watch Promise Neverland. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the show is as bad as you think it is, Sash. <laughs> yeah, it's not top No tier. comment. Okay.